curved screen out of boxes. So, yeah, I'm working on that today. So, yeah, all day yesterday and the form sites, I got my own form site. Um, it's right, it's Crystal Witch Technology Screens. So, you know, we have discussions in there about gray screen paint products, all right? It's kind of like, whew, man, it's like trying to watch people trying to reintroduce the laser disc. It's an outdated piece of technology. It, people really, a gray screen can't be used anywhere at all, period. And there are people who get frustrated and upset and angry about this, and they feel that we're lying. Well, hey, look, you're going to be challenged in court either way, you know, if you want, you can get a lawyer and you can take me to court, anyone who makes a gray screen, and challenge me on the fact that you don't read contrast levels and you don't work in ambulant environments, especially commercial environments. You don't work on any of the projectors that we have over here or any ones I've seen. And uh, you can't read an affinity contrast level. So you don't pick up any of that at all, period. But if you're all, if, I'm curious, what are they telling their customers? if a customer says hey look you know we got to pick up these 100 contrast levels can your screen do this and if you told them yes you just committed fraud you can't say that that's like me saying that hey black technology we have over here reads a hundred percent white level you've never heard me say that out of my mouth never because you know why any dark screen is going to drop off a little bit on the white levels we talk about the sacrifice field and how much you're going to sacrifice this is why we do the black on black demonstrations to show you exactly how much your screen is going to go through of a sacrifice field if you use this if you use that besides our stuff so we know this we also design um the uh crystal edge technology just a digital one which is a free gray screen paint product we give away for free we have a black silver which is a little bit lighter we have gunmetal technology and in, in the color ones and even in these screens we never sit there and say oh you can get infinity contrast level no you can't get that this is the only screen that has the capability to give you an infinity one contrast so if i don't know what they're telling their customers if you're telling me you have ambient light rejection capabilities you have lied because you don't have that at all crazy screens can't read it at all they don't pick it up Perfect example, customer had the 4K projector screen completely washed out. You're, anyone's considering that to be a good picture, <laughs> then yeah, right, you're absolutely blind. Now, that projector, we had at the end of the day, had a half a million to one contrast on that thing. So it should have been able to pick up perfectly. The only problem, the screen couldn't read it because number one, it wasn't reading contrast, didn't read color because the screen was completely washed out. And when he opened up the curtains, the screen disappeared. So they don't possess ambient light rejection capability. And someone has posted that to their website that it, it's not ambient light rejection, but yet you give off the illusion as if it is. So if you're on your site and you're putting down it's not ambient light rejection, but you're opening up windows and pointing toward open doors, you're giving off the misconception that it is. Because why else would that customer open up those windows knowing that this screen was going to wash it anyway, unless he's going to sabotage you, but he didn't look like the kind of person was going to sabotage you. Like he was doing an honest review on your product. So somewhere along the line, he got the idea that he could open up the curtains and the screen would function. Maybe because he saw your videos of you trying to do the exact same thing. Yeah, didn't work out so well, did it? And there are a lot of other customers who've complained about the product washing out. Colors washing out. Uh, product matching house paint, which we've seen multiple times. Actually, we've seen him in his own video demonstration doing this. I've done dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of black versus black demonstrations. They're posted on our website. They're on our forum sites. We don't see these demonstrations on other people's site. You know why? Because there's stuff will match this stuff literally. And that's another concern you got. What are you getting in that can that's being popped over to your address? What kind of shipping policy are you that's involved with their business? There you go. So, again, this is the stuff and the reason why we're going to be taking these companies to court. Because they're committing fraud on left and right levels. They're not doing things correctly. You see that post thumbnail? Yeah, that's your paint in that thumbnail. That's what my product and eight did to your product. Your screen did not register. It couldn't read. That's a 4,000 lumen Chrissy projector that I'm using in that demonstration. Full 1080p and it couldn't read your screen paint. That is your personal mix and Metallica mix and a white surface all at the same time on a splatter screen. Your product didn't read. 
those demonstrations we show with the screen half splatter in that fully environment against a phantom that's your product up there it doesn't work at all but i don't know what you're doing or how you're lying to customers and you're telling them that oh the product does work it reads 100 percent contrast how is this even possible Goose screen doesn't even read 100% contrast at all, period. So how, what are you telling customers at the end of the day? You're lying to them. That's what you're doing. You're lying to them to try to make a fast buck. But guess what? In court, when we get this into a courtroom and we put your company on fraud, you've got to pay all that money back to your customers because you didn't tell them the truth. Unless you sat up there and was 100% honest and say, hey, look, uh, this product... It can't see read 100% contrast. You have to be in a dark ambient light controlled environment. Matter of fact, way worse than that because I showed you in a demonstration that a simple gray screen in a dark environment, I can use a cell phone flashlight in order to wash it out. So you're going to have to be in a completely dark environment to use that stuff. And you're going to have to spend the money for high-end projectors to fix the screen's resolution because the resolution is going to be extremely poor because it's a gray screen can't read depth so these things are black and they can read depth and detail and all that good stuff set up my 720p projector right now see how they can uh got great detail to them so if you're going on and you're making these accusations and you're basically deceiving your customers and telling them that they can basically have 100 percent color balance you're going to pick up a white level. That is true. But 1% pure white? No. No, don't do that. Only white screens have that capability. So that's a lie. And it's your ambient light rejection? No. You can't be painted the ceilings. You can't be painted the floors. And you sure enough can't be used on a projector desk. Because they don't work. You can't use projector mapping applications. Because they require that ultra black contrast. Especially if you're going to be doing something that's going to involve 100% contrast. Which is going to be needed. Gray screens don't work for gaming. They're actually horrible in gaming. A lot of contrast in gaming. How do they work? I play a lot of zombie games. You know, zombie games basically require a lot of heavy contrast. That picks up much better on a darker screen. So, outside applications? Absolutely no. And the reason why is because there's more light out there than there is in here. Which means that screen's going to wash up 10 times faster. So it doesn't work either period dedicated theater rooms we built one of those no they don't work in there either matter of fact they splash light up on the ceilings the floors everywhere they can't absorb light so it can't be used for that either yeah it's an obsolete product it became obsolete when the gunmetal technology came out that's when they became obsolete because even people with deep pockets with make their own screen paint mixers. Heck, you can just make your own. Nothing special about it. Just make your own product. But anyway, um, majority of most people, when you go on those sites, they're not going to buy it. They're not going to buy a gray screen paint product. Unless it's showing that it's doing something that no other gray screen paint can do, then they'll buy it. But other than that, they're, most people will make it themselves. All this is just black and white paint. That's pretty much all it is. There's nothing special about it. And the reason why we can say that is because that free mix that we have on our channel called the Blacklist that shows the individual making the paint for free, that matched a lot of his paint. And mine is a challenge that's on there that's been sitting there for three years. And that challenge states for him to make the same product on a live stream and put it against this product. You can't tamper with it because we all know what's in it. The digital and crystal screen paint's free. The ingredients is right there. There's a challenge behind that one. He never made that one either. You know why? Because that's his product black and white paint. That's all it is. So I'm pretty sure that customer whose screen washed out probably went out and bought a certified screen. What is the difference between a gray screen and a black diamond? Elite Screen Dark Star 9. DMP Supernova, Infinity and Blade. Any one of those. Those screens are far more superior than that. Even daylight screen is a far more superior screen than a gray screen paint mix. If you're going to be getting into this field, I would avoid gray screen paint at all costs. 
Because again, one of the bigger problems that gray screen paints have at the end of the day is the stores. Like I said, Home Depot, Lowe's, Benjamin Moore, any one of them get an idea like, hey, look, we got all this gray paint up in here. Let's make our own gray screen paint. And we'll market it and sell it as uh, add-on for a patio or a barbecue because it's already there already. You already go to Home Depot and Lowe's. You got barbecue equipment in there. They got freaking patio. They sell everything in barbecue equipment from freaking utensils to freaking spices. You can buy spices and barbecue sauce right there at Home Depot. You buy your bar, you buy your oh, your wood, your kendo, everything is right there. So what's to say that they don't come along and say, hey, look, you know, let's let's make a gray screen paint. Then you're competing with them. Because we ain't, we can beat that stuff any day of the week. And they're never going to make a black screen because, again, it's too complicated for them. They're not going to go down that road. They're going to do something fast and easy. And since they're a big chain at the end of the day, it's not going to be hard for them to push that product. And that's going to obsolete your product just like that. Because they're like, Home Depot got a screen paint. And you know why I said how easy that is? Because when Home Depot came out with the bare silver screen, which technically was not designed for projectors, that's what they called it. And everybody flocked to them just to buy that silver screen and paint it up. They just have to know how to utilize it correctly. Uh, let me see. I need a vector for this. So a gray screen can't read contrast. That's a lie. It doesn't read color. That's a lie. And if you notice in all the demonstrations, when using gray screens, they'll use beefy projectors. They use projectors with insane amount of contrast, color capability, and they'll make sure those babies are 4K because the projector is doing all the work. So make sure that the screen's in a poorly lit environment. You'll see little lights splash behind the back of the screen. You see my LED lights here? These things don't even freaking pop off in here. You know why? Because we got a ton of light hitting the desk. That's why. Where's the remote control for this thing? So you go into another form site where other people make gray screen paints and convince those people in that form site that your product is different from theirs. And I bet you they'll tell you at the end of the day, nobody, you're a liar. How is your stuff different from mine? You want a really good challenge and they go in there and talk with them. You go to ABS Forms, they got a nice section over here. I'll show you. I'll point you to do it in a way, and I bet you we'll find you in there. You know why? Because your product is outdated. This is a 720p projector, 600 by 800. Thousand lumens, that's all we're using. It can register on this screen. Your gray screen paint doesn't register. If I put a star field right now for this projector, it'll read off ours, it won't read off yours. So, this is my cardboard desk. How would I utilize this if the screen paint's gray? Sure enough, I won't be looking at anything, any black levels. Look, that's black level right there. That's not going to pull. So what, I'm just look at this gray, faded, washed out image. And if I can't read that, then I can't read color. Because that's going to fall right along with it. And if you're talking about really good white levels, then I might just buy a white screen. Because it's literally going to do the same thing. So in order for me to get the screen to work correctly, I want to spend the money for an expensive projector to fix the problem. And I want to darken my environment. But the funny, hard thing about this is, this is not a theater setup. At all, period. So when I walk into commercial environments and I'm showing off our technology, like I when I did at the um, the caring place, and I walked in that environment, you can't turn those lights off in those environments, the hallways, the upstairs, none of that area. No, those lights have to stay on. So how would you operate? At the smoke lounge where we had to push fish through a window, how would you operate? You can't. At all, period. Because every customer that I've seen with this stuff has been in these dark environments. Meanwhile, my customers can go outside and watch food demonstration off the side of a fence. You get what you pay for. So, no. And if you're going to sit there and say, well, you don't have any knowledge in that field, please don't play yourself that way. Because I was making great screen paint before you existed on YouTube. Check out my video count and experience on my YouTube channel versus yours on how much I know versus you. I know far more than you do. I've been here longer. So, yes. Let me see. I'm going to go to my... See how old my menu is? My menu is super old. I love this menu. Is there a keystone correct? 
I don't put the automatic keystone on. There we go. 4.3. I gotta check out that fallout. If I get the time, that's the problem. I don't have the time. So, you know, you're not getting, and for the customer, this is why you cannot get a batch number. This is why there are no tests on these products at all. Testing for them, this is what testing for them is. Dark environment, high power projector, that's it. Oh, it works, damn it. Anything will work. I can get notebook paper to do the same thing. Heck, I can get any gray paint from Home Depot will do the exact same thing. Anything will do the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, in the fellow's demonstration, on the Optima P2 projector, it picked up the same image on the network gray 773, and that's house paint. Man, he, had, he gets on there and he complains about it. it has a yellowish tone, it has this and that and the other. Well, if you stand behind this so much, how come we don't see this posted directly on your website on a big, huge video player so people can see it? You know why? Because you don't want people to see it. Because if people see that, they won't buy your product. They'll just go get the paint instead. Because there isn't any difference at all, period. Even though you want to convince people on that. Now, I got to pop over to Home Depot today because I got to pick up black paint. You know why? Because someone was supposed to send me black paint, but I never got it. Matter of fact, all of them were given the right to send me black paint, and I never got it. So I'll be picking it up myself as usual. But while I'm over there, I'm going to show them some videos on gray screen paint and why they need to start incorporating and making some kind of gray paint for their home theater setups. I mean, you got the barbecue grills here. You have everything here. To have your the ultimate home barbecue background, whatever you need, back, backyard, uh, um, um, cinema, whatever. You got it all there. And you got great paint there. So I'll give them a free ingredients on how to make great paint. As a matter of fact, I'll give them the ingredients for digital and crystal screen paint. All that stuff is in there. Because that's where we got it from to begin with. You ever heard a story about how I found out, how the Lord blessed me with that technology, how it first started? Yeah, it was in Home Depot. So I can give them everything they need in Home Depot to make that product to put you guys out of business. And then, in the process, bring in the black technology and wipe out the um, digital one and show a much more advanced product and make a ton of money. You don't know how to operate business. That's the problem. You really don't. I can use you to literally make money. And I do it all the time. When I walk into a showroom or I walk into um, uh, on-site, we show a gray screen. This is why you don't buy gray screens. This is how they react in fully lit environments they don't pick up. This is a white surface. This is what your screen is doing right now. If you upgrade it to this gray, this is all you're going to get out of it. And if you use our technology, this is what we get. We use your products in order to make us money. <sighs> they don't work. And I know. I used to make that stuff. But your wall is picking up the entire section. This whole wall is covered in black technology. Everything's covered. I was planning to project them at the back wall, but I never got around to doing that demonstration either. But yeah, you 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 can't you can't use it for anything. If I come into you and say, "Hey, look, I got a dome that I want to be to produce stars on. I want to turn it into an intergalactic space field. Can your gray screen paint give me?" the contrast that I need to be to produce this outer space exhibit. Now, mind you, in a dark environment, guess what? A person used to seeing black techno dark technology, we can actually see your screen is gray because that's what we pick up. So they're going to know the difference of whether or not your screen can read a 100% contrast. And they're going to tell you their projectors, of course, their projectors are probably going to have this insane amount of contrast because that's what they're pushing for. They probably use white screens already. So that's why they went out and spent the money for the high contrast projectors, but they're not achieving it because you can still see it. Any lights, anything fire off, any projectors go off in an environment, that screen automatically changes rapidly. So can you give them a 100% contrast on that? You can't. Just like when I saw the demonstration with the um, screen you had over at the school or campus or whatever it was, there were two main lights right next to the screen. Well, your birds washed out, everything else washed out on the screen, and then I noticed they turned those lights off. They should have never had to turn those lights off, especially with the caliber of um, a venue projector that they were using in the demonstration. Those lights should have never been turned off at all, period. And they're going to have to keep them on anyway. It's a classroom. So who turns off lights in the classroom? Uh, let me get... Uh, YouTube.
So, yeah, the gray screen, it's a lie. Unless they're telling you the 100% truth, it's not going to read a contrast. 100% can't pick it up. It doesn't register color correctly. This is what I tell you to calibrate all the time. OLED demonstration, 8K. They're not ambient light rejection technology. They can't be used outside because, again, you know, they have problems picking up the contrast and color, which they can't read. They can't use them for projector mapping. They can't be used for floor and ceiling displays. They're bad enough they don't even operate on walls half the time. So it's an obsolete product. It served this time. It served this time when the white screen was the rage. As a matter of fact, I remember the debates of the white screen. It was the white wall versus a physical screen. And then it became the uh, white projection screen versus the gray screen paint. And then when the gun metals popped up, the only reason why that the gray screen still had life left in it because you know, some people can afford the $5,000, $3,000 certified screens, but the other half that couldn't, they had to go with the gray screens because they couldn't afford those high and expensive screens. And that's the only reason why you stayed afloat. That's it. Now, if the gunmetal came out and said the gunmetal was two, three, four hundred dollars $400, you would have been wiped off the face of the planet. Easily. You wouldn't even exist it. But because the gunmetals were four dollars $5,000 screens, well, guess what? Your product still survived. And if you say, oh, well, that's wrong, okay, let's take a person who can afford five grand for a screen. How can you change his mind? How can you convince him that gray paint is going to do better than a daylight's dark screen, dark sternine, or any diamond technology? How can you convince them? And they got the money to spend it. Either way, they can spend it on you, they can spend it on them. How do you convince them that you're better? You can't. Because the gunmetal screen can survive in fully lit environments. They have extremely high gain swim. You notice if you look at the great screen paints, they only have a 2.0. That's the highest they can go. They can't do 4.0 or 5.0, none of that. And look at the certified screens. They can bring in at 8, 8, 8, um, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. They bring up extremely high gains. They're darker screens. They pick up better contrast. They pick up better color. And they maintain amazing white levels. So... If I got deep pockets, I'm not going near you at the end of the day. I'm going to buy one of them. Now, when it comes to our technology, how do we convince somebody with deep pockets that our product's better? We register better color. We pick up an infinity contrast level. We absorb 10 times more light. Heck, we can survive outside in environments that a gunmetal screen can't even begin to even think of. We don't require expensive projectors. Our screens, because it doesn't suffer from the reflective surface or now viewing cone, can operate on projectors of ultra sure throw without spending the money extra for another projection screen to make it because it's ultra sure throw compatible. We don't require calibrating in any way whatsoever. Our screens are completely borderless because they're jet black. We're talking about the advanced technology. Now, the other technology we designed, yes, is advanced, it is, but this is our top screen, which would be black technology. Is the screen unwatchable? We have dozens and dozens of demos. As a matter of fact, more test demonstrations than anybody else's product on the market showing our products at dozens of demonstrations on 1,000 lumens, 50 lumen projectors versus white surfaces. If a certified gunmetal with a 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 can't turn my screen dark, a white screen can't even do it either. So our screens can maintain fantastic white levels. As I showed you with the smarter screen surface, it has a difficult time registering its white levels. We don't have that issue. That's what I consider on my 720p projector, 600 by 800, and produce that beautiful image. We don't require expensive projectors to fix the problem because the screen is lacking. And we don't require contrast of any kind on any kind of projector. As a matter of fact, you don't even need one when you work with our technology. So, that means we obsolete the gray screen, we obsolete the gunmetal technology, we obsolete the white screen, which would make this the number one screen. And for any of the other gray screens that want to complain, we have cancellations. That's it. That's the end of that argument altogether. So, we take you to court, or you can take me to court, whatever, and say that the accusations that I made against your product are false. That you're stating that your screen reads a 100% infinity contrast level, you pick up a perfect color balance, you operate in fully lit environments. 
Now, when you sit there and say, well, we work on ultra short throws, yeah, you'll work on an ultra short throw. The quality is going to suck. That's the problem. You work on this projector right here. Quality is going to suck. You work on any of my Christie projectors behind me at 4,000, 5,000 lumens. You work on it, but the quality is going to suck. That's what it's going to come down to. I'm not saying your product can't be seen. Notebook paper can be seen at the end of the day on a projector, but the quality is going to suck. That's what it comes down to. Whether you're going to get 100% of your projector or you're going to get half of it. You ever seen them demonstrations we do? We have the projector cut in half. That gives the, I get, let me show off the screen where it's just a splatter screen and show you how much you're missing. So you're getting 50%, if not less, of your projector's capability when you use these particular screens. You can take them to court. You can argue that up and down. I bet you lose. Heck, I'm willing to put, how about if we put $200,000 up? I bet you none of you would sign that contract to go into that courtroom. Because you lie. Just like when we tell you to send me black paint, hey, if my product is so dark, it's unwatchable, it doesn't work, and you made all these accusations, feel free to ship me down black paint. Did I get my black paint? No, we never received it. So guess what that means? That means you lied. So guess what? Lawsuit away. Now, let's talk about this other lawsuit. Challenging your companies. If you are making statements that your product is doing these particular things, then guess what? You're going to have to back this up. And making an accusation that a gray screen sees 100% contrast is completely stupid because it's not true. But yet you did a dark environment with the woman with the black makeup on. Dark environment and say, look, we pick up 100% contrast. You know that's a lie. Because if that was the case and you picked up 100% contrast, the fellow with the 4K projector would have picked up something because in a couple of those demonstrations, it was showing a black background and none of it picked up. Heck, the color didn't even pick up. So, it's not true. You're lying. That's what you're doing. And the curious thing about it, this is what I find is so interesting and sad at the same time. How... Are you going to lie to a customer because you know they're going to find out? If I never knew and I bought paint from you and you're going to tell me at the end of the day that I'm going to pick up the image that I'm seeing on your YouTube channel, on your website. I'm seeing that with a P2 projector. So you're telling me the 720p projector, say I'm using this model right here. This is what I'm using. I like to use this projector. It's mine. This is what I'm using on your product. You're telling me that this projector right here is going to pick up the exact same image as the P2 that you're using. If that's the case, then why would someone spend $3,100 for an ultra short though when it can spend 70 bucks for this one? Now, in order for you to say that our product makes a 720p projector look like a 4K, you're gonna to have to back that theory up. And that means you're gonna to have to have a ton of testing behind that. And we have that already. We literally have a 4K projector versus 720p. Heck, we have a 1,000 projector versus 5,000. So you're going to have to back that up. Can't just say it. You say you work on venue projectors. You don't have enough information. You don't even know anything about venue projectors. I can sit there and tell you, say, hey, what's the difference between a an LX uh, 400 Chrissy and a uh, Chrissy uh, LW 400? What's the difference between the two? They both look exactly the same, except for one's different than the other. You know anything about them at all? Period. But you claim on venue. A gray screens don't register in venue projectors because venue projectors produce too much light from the lamp, which means that's like adding more light to the environment to a screen that already can't handle it and is not ambient light projection, so the screen washes out. The church screen you see in the demo demonstration, they try to white surface and then they try to light gray surface, and the light gray surface still wouldn't read at 7,000 lumens. So you wash out even faster. So they don't work on venue projectors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some black paint and white paint today. We're going to take two scoops of black paint. We're going to make your Metallica Mix 2.0. It's your product. You use it for free. It's right there showing you how to make it. So we're going to make that and we're going to show that your product doesn't work. I don't have to buy it and make it. And keep in mind, as I told you before, I've made the statement that that product matches a lot of your stuff. But there's a challenge sitting right on top of it. A challenge that's been there for four years. So the challenge is for him to go in and basically take that free mixture that he shows you how to make for free and put it against the rest of his products, which he hasn't done. 
can't cheat on that. You can't open up containers and drop black paint in like you did with the other one. This one you have to make online. Digital official screen paint ingredients is right there. You just make that online too also. That stuff will match your stuff. Matter of fact, there's a couple of people who give away free grade paint. And that stuff would match your stuff. But you don't do any of those demonstrations at all. Matter of fact, the demonstration you did on the um, uh, Cinema Grade 5D, that screen had two deep creases in the screen, which would basically disrupt the screen's picture quality. And you had it in a dark environment. It literally, you had it in the same dark environment that you would be in. And that screen has a much higher gain than a, than a great projection screen. Now, so the other people that I read about their products online and I've tested their stuff and had it here, it does exactly what it's designed to do, but it can't read the infinity contrast. It doesn't pick up color correctly. You know, it does what, it's, what it does. That's what it does. It does what it does. No more, no less. That's what it does. It's not going to enhance your contrast capabilities. It's not going to enhance your color. It does what it does. Over a white surface, a little bit. You're going to get a little bit of a bump. But are you going to see a uh, heavy advancement? No. Not getting any of that at all, period. Why do you think he chose that particular projector with the two main and one contrast to fix his problem? That's why. And again, I can't express this enough, but a gray screen is going to cost you more money. My setups versus yours. I've seen your projectors. You have to go and you have to spend $3,100 for a machine. The last time he had was he had a couple of Optimas. He had the Optima at 2,000 lumens, 4K. And I was around probably about a $3,000 projector. Heavy amount of contrast attached to it. And still had to use that machine in a dark environment. You do know your projector is set up to be a set-top box, right? It's supposed to replace the TV. That's what they're for. So you can't even use that in a fully lit environment. And looking at how dark your apartment is, your apartment never came in that dark. When you first moved into that apartment, you mean that apartment was that dark? No, it wasn't. I've seen other apartments in that unit. I have a friend that actually lives in your unit. And his apartment is nowhere as dark as yours. Every place that I've ever lived in, every place I've laid my head in, I've never changed the environment. You never see me going there and darken walls and basically get blackout uh, blinds and all that stuff. We don't do that stuff. Nah. So, you got to stop lying. And it's just, this, this, this few individuals that do this, they lie on about their products. Because again, as I said before, it, it, the lies that you tell on your page, your customers are going to find out sooner or later. And you can't ship back. You can't do that. How are you going to ship back an item and test it? Ship backs require testing if you haven't tested the product itself to begin with. So you can't do that. You can't do a batch number. What are you going to do? Do a batch of customer contacts and say, hey, look, I turned on my lights on my screen washed out. I had no contrast, I had no color, nothing at all, but you said that I could pick up all of this. So, what are you going to say to them? Oh, send it back here, we'll do a demonstration on contrast in a fully lit environment. How is that going to work? You can't do it to begin with, so how are you going to get around that? You can't. That's why you can't do a ship back. This is why your policy is designed up to where if this thing lands on your property, it's yours. If you open it up, it's yours. Just in case... If the customer happened to discover that the product is faulty and doesn't work the way it's supposed to, it's called he's got a safe plan set up that you can't return that product at all. The other one has it set up where basically if the product is defective, you can return it, but it has to show that the product is defective. That's not going to be hard to do, consider the fact that they're not going to be able to figure out how to get the range gain. That's considered to be a defective and not as described. And product coming out a different color, that's also considered to be defective right there. Yeah, a lot of problems. And if they paint it on a rear projection screen, which is going to be pretty messed up, because again, that stuff isn't front and rear. It doesn't have rear capabilities. You're going to mess, mess around and darken someone's screen and damage your surface. It's also considered to be defective and not as described. Now, if a customer made a claim on us saying, hey, the screen cracked, well, we can take it, put it on a piece of cardboard, crumble it up over and over again and again and again and again. And show it doesn't basically crumble. We paint this on motorized projection screens. And we have screens that sit outside. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to have a screen outside for about a year before you can claim it to be weatherproof. 
And we have technology that is weatherproof because we've had screens outside longer than a year. I was at that house for about five years. But we had screens out there that long. And that same coding, that same technology gets embedded into our stuff over here. All our stuff is weatherproof. So, yeah, it's a lie. You can't do this with a great screen. Don't believe it. It's a bunch of hype. And you're getting ripped off. Unless they're being honest with you and up front saying, hey, look, I don't even know how it would work in a dedicated theater room because that would be a lie, too. <laughs> so you're going to pick up contrast in dark. The screens can't read in the dark. That all, period. It's sad, but they can't. Can't say you're picking up color because you're definitely not picking up that. Can't be used for infinity ceilings. You know that it's not going to work because you can't pick up a star field to begin with because your screen can't register black. I don't even know what this, how you would write your specifications down. They'd be below, below mediocre. You can show that you have an advancement on a white screen, but you can't say you're getting amazing, insane contrast because that's a lie. Yeah, that, that's, um, it's obsolete. There's nothing you can do with it. When I go on site on my locations, we're going to make that black and white mixture. Your product, because I'm not buying jack for you. There's no way anyone giving you 60 bucks for something that we can literally make or go on any form site and do the same thing. Or go to one of these other places and get it. And if, again, we've given him options to make these products. All these challenges, we've never done any of these challenges. He did one of them, and that was the Network Gray. And you've seen the results of that one from the door. Oh, and he did the um, the uh, the personal mix on the bare silver screen. You've seen the reaction to that one, too. Both of them turned out horrible. They both matched. So, no, I'm not buying that stuff. I'm going to make your free mix. That uh, Metallica Mix 2.0. We'll paint that down to a surface. And I'm going to def definitely take that and put that... Um, and our demonstrations when we go on site. We'll be using that for our demonstrations. Hmm. Man. No, oh, yeah, he'll get better and mad and upset about the whole thing. Who cares? You gotta back your products up. You can't be lying on camera telling people a false truth about your products. You can't do that. Like I said, if you feel at the end of the day that I gave false information, mind you, I've had your products here, I've unboxed them before you started basically doing the other dumb nonsense. <clears throat> if you feel that I don't have enough knowledge in gray screen paint products and that your products don't match network grade 773, hey, we'll challenge that one in court. So for this one's not gonna be a $12,000 uh, small claims trial. This is going to be a serious trial. This is going to be about eighty to a hundred thousand dollars in jail time, including with this, because it's going to be company fraud. So make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before you run your mouth, because I do. I have experience in all fields. Because they're going to ask me, Mr. Bird, what is your knowledge on this product? I can go back and show them an entire section of Digital One Crystal Screen Paint on exactly comparison of where my product was at that time compared to where your product is at now. You go to court and you say, I say, Your Honor, he says, I know how to make black paint. Your Honor, we gave him permission to make our product twice. This is our results. This is what he came up with. We made the same product. He called himself make it, and this is our results. It didn't even work. So we know you can't make black technology from the door. But like I said, if you want to go to court on this about challenging your company, we can go, no problem. Um, make sure that you got everything up to speed because if not buddy you're gonna get your shirt you're gonna get your clock cleaned in there that's what's gonna happen you're gonna have to back up that that gray paint is reading that infinity contrast level and you know it's a lie we can request retribution for your customers that you have to pay all of them back from the time you first found out that that product match house paint you have to pay all those people back including the fines and penalties they're going to slam you with. And mind you, if you get caught with fraud and you decide to bring criminal charges into this while we're up there, you're looking at some serious jail time. Because that can pop up easy in the middle of a lawsuit. Now, we bring you to court and we're suing you for copyright infringement. It's going to come up in court um, 
are we have we filed any criminal charges for this act because it is a crime what you just did and we're going to tell the judge yes we have and then they're going to go look into that and see how long that case is going and they may speed up the process but so then that's on another section right there right now you're going to have to because like i said i'm going to challenge your company in court you made all these lies that your product did all these things and you claimed that this great paint at the end of the day the uh your products uh pull this 100 contrast levels and pull we heard you lie on camera so many times that you're doing all these things but the problem is that from what i'm seeing from your customers and i'm getting this and from the testing we have done on your products when we used to be to get them before you started doing all the fraud stuff it didn't work at all and in that thumbnail right there that's your product right there that's your personal mix and metallica 2.0 which, when I found the video was sent to me on the Metallica 2.0 and how to make it for free, you show how to make for free. Remember that. Um, we actually made the rest of your products. It wasn't really hard to do. It's just black and white paint. That's all it is. Now, I don't know what's worse. The fact that your product is black and white paint or and you're trying to make it to be something that it's not or the fact that you match the house paint that you can literally slide off a shelf. And that's the worst. So your customers right now, uh, the ones, because when we did the check to see if anybody else had it, no one else came up. And we can only find customers from five to five years to a year ago. We can only find them. So the sad thing about those guys at the end of the day is that they really believe that they had this good product. But in the end, they just bought a house paint for $60 at a court. Could have walked over two gallons on that. Or you could have went to any form site and made it for free. Because plenty of form sites give it away for free. Oh, and so you notice right from the door, my digital one crystal screen paint never went for 60 bucks. My digital one crystal screen paint went for $150 a quart. That's what it sold for. And $300 a gallon. Man, that's how much I was selling it for. Well, your product only sells for 60 bucks. Highest you ever sold your product is like a 80, 90 bucks. That's it. So that shows you where my product was compared to your great product. And my stuff was contracted. It was overseas. Or showing my product in different showrooms. You didn't have any of that at all, period. Beta testers, all that stuff. You didn't have any of that, period. None of it. So even when I was making my own gray screen paint, I was on a much higher level than you were right now. The level that you're on is a level when I first started my business, when I had to prove that the product worked. But at least I did much a, b a better job. And I had to do a good job because that's why I was able to sell my product for that kind of money and get those contracts at the end of the day. Because I realized if you cut corners, a lot of people were doing Jamie stuff. They were cutting corners. They were doing the exact same thing. Dark environment, high power projectors. A lot of people were doing that. We did the opposite. Now look how beautiful my screen looks here on my black technology. Now, Jamie being jealous, of course, went in and started rumors that our products produced dark levels. This is why you're going to court. This is why you're being sued. Because you went out and spread these false rumors that you did false demonstrations against my products, saying that the black screen paints that we make, you can't see them at all. They don't work. And that's why in April, May, and June, you're going to find yourself bouncing in and out of court having a, a process server post to your door and knocking on your door and coming down to your job because you're bringing you to court on that. You made the statement. Don't get on camera and cry and whine. You made the statement. I have no time for Karens. I really don't. You got on camera. You made these false accusations and now it's time to pay up. Now you want to cry and whine about things. No, you're going to court, buddy. And you're going to sit before a judge. And guess what? There'll be no lawyers there. See, this is small claims court. I explained before. This is with me, you, and a judge. I want you in there by yourself. Now, let's see how far your intelligence goes. Let's see if you can back up everything you said with all the substantial evidence that will be thrown in your face. So you'll have no lawyer in there to talk for you or help you out in any way whatsoever. It's going to be you in there by yourself with me. That's why I chose to do it that way. 
And that's going to scare the daylights out of you. See, most people feel confidence when they go into court when they have an attorney. Because the attorney can talk and say things that they won't even understand. I know a lot of that stuff that goes on in that courtroom, you don't at the end of the day. So my vantage point is way over yours. So when we get in that courtroom, it's going to feel like the whole entire room is closing in on you. Because you don't have anyone to speak for you. And that's not going to go well. So all the accusations that you made about my product, you're going to have to back them up. And if you lose, you're going to come out there even poor. Every time we bring you through there, you're going to come out even poor. That's why I chose to bring you. I'm not going to do it all in one hit. We're going to break it down. Multiple lawsuits. So each time a server hits your door, you have to go to court for that. If you don't show up, you lose 12 grand each time. This is going to add up. And every time you don't come in and we win the court case, I go up and I execute judgment with the creditors and they contact whatever uh, um, uh, authority or people they're going to be using over in California because we can't use ones over here. I have to get a processor. I have to get a processor over in California that you serve him. And they're going to be the ones to come to your front door with the police to collect $12,000 worth of your stuff. And then... We're going to follow another one and the process service is going to come to your door again and follow and say hey look you got a lawsuit just hit you and we need you to show up in court you don't show up for that we come take it again we take some more from you each time we take more and more and more and more and more that's how it's going to be done you have to learn that you don't go around making false accusations against people's products this can get you sued and it has it's got you sued so you're on the phone and you were screaming and yelling at me because you do this, we watched it in open chats, we bring you in, you scream and yell. I watched it on your website, you got a history of screaming and yelling on your website and posting pornography and all kinds of dumb nonsense to get you in a lot of trouble. You don't know how to talk like a sensible adult. I'm not going to sit there and have an argument with you, that's a waste of my time. You sat there and called my phone three times in the middle of a live stream. Child, that's what you are. Could have waited till the stream was over and we could have had that conversation. But you like to showboat. You like to do dumb stuff and that's what you do. You're a small child. So I waited till the stream was over. I called you back. I said, hello, who is this? They called you called here three times. And you said, I said, you said, it's he. I said, he who? Act like an adult. Say your name. So when you said who it was, I said, okay, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'll see you in court. I'm going to be suing you. What did you say? Oh, have your lawyer contact me. Have... No, 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 no. Didn't you just hear me on camera saying you were going to small claims court? There's no lawyer required for this. You will have no one speak for you on your behalf. You will go in that courtroom and you will speak on your own behalf. I don't want anybody speaking for you. I want to hear everything come out of your mouth. Me, you, and judge. That's it. When I file for the CCB, which is copyright, uh, um, uh, the copyright frame board, the copyright board, whatever it is, but the copyright board, when we file for them, there's no lawyers in there. It's just me, you, and a judge. I want you to sit down and have a nice conversation with that judge and explain to him or her of what you did. And when they question you, because they're going to talk directly to you, usually they'll talk directly to the lawyer. And the lawyer will talk back to the judge, and the lawyer will refer some things back to you, and you'll talk back and forth. That's how that works. No, 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 no. You're going to talk directly to the judge. That's how I want it done. So, there is no contact with any lawyer. Now, near the end of the year, when we're suing you for $1 million, then we will have attorneys involved. Then my attorneys will reach out to you. That's how that's going to be done. But by then, we'll have about four or five lawsuits already, already against you. We're basically for ripping off a company, for defamation, uh, copyright and free, all kinds of stuff. We're going to have already one against you, including uh, court cases with this um, CCB or BB, CCB. And by the time we get you into the big court case, we will already have a track record already on you. So when they go in and check your record, they can see you were sued multiple times by my company and two different accounts of post, actual, sorry, post office mail fraud with two accounts of copyright infringements. See, we're building a case on you. You don't know how to do business correctly. That's the problem. You're like a bull in a china shop. You don't think. You just smash things up. 
There's a way to handle situations. And that's how we handle situation. We'll build a case on you. Then I'll get you in front of the big boy courts. But I think your lawyer won't touch you with a 10-foot pole. And the rest of them, well, that's what the private investigator is for, to hunt down the rest of them. Because when they realize that their rock has been uncovered and we know exactly who you are and where you're at, it's only a matter of time before Jamie's going to start basically diming you guys out left and right, or you're going to all just start pointing your fingers at each other, which usually happens anyway. Hmm. Guys don't know business at all. Anyway, let's so move on from here. So we have to make sure, if I'm going to spend this money on this attorney, I have to make sure 100% that we win. 100%. So that's why we do small claims first. Because small claims doesn't require attorneys at all, period. Which means I can go and I can represent myself. And I have enough documents on you to win every single time. And the fact that you have criminal charges that were already filed against you, you're not coming down here because you'll be within the jurisdiction zone, which means I can have you arrested. Yep. So you can't come down here. You're going to stay up there. And those lawsuits are going to go through. You will never show up. And what's going to happen is it's an open and shut case. You forfeit automatically from the door. And you guys are too easy. You're way too easy. Anybody else would have never entertained it that far. They never would have. At all, period. In fear that they would pop up in court. That's why. But you guys just didn't, just really did not. Do you got anybody around you with a sense of common sense or intelligent that were telling you at the end of the day that you were reeling yourself in for a possibility to go to court and be sued? You didn't, did you? Gee, it was Louise. Well, well. But anyway, your company is going to be challenged on your false accusations that your products were pulling contrast levels that you claimed to your customers. They were going to read a 100% contrast. You also made statements on camera. We got all this recorded of you making these accusations. Um, also, two accusations that they're pulling up 100% color and all this stuff. And even one point, I even heard you said if you calibrate your projector, you can actually pull your contrast levels um, equal to a black screen. Now, if you say that's not pop, if you say that's, you never said that. Well, Jamie, we heard you even say that. Two quarts of your product can paint up to a 300-inch screen. That's a false. It's a lie. It doesn't do that. It's virtually impossible. There's so many things you just lie about. But your product doesn't work. The gray screen is obsolete. Where's my socket? There we go. Ugh. The gray screen is obsolete. It doesn't work in any way whatsoever. And the accusations you said about my products being unwatchable, they don't work in nothing but black paint, well, you're going to have to back that up or you're going to lose your shirt. That's what's going to happen. Now, the other stuff of taking pictures and all that stuff, that's a defamation lawsuit. You're going to be sued on those. That's where the, more of the heavier lawsuits come in at multiple times because for each one of those pictures, I could file a lawsuit against you. For each one. How many have we done? Quite a lot, right? So we're going to bunch those in tens, groups of tens, and I'm going to go in and file lawsuits for each one of those in groups of ten. Because I could basically number one by one. I can drag you out of court for the rest of your life if you want. But let's make this quick and fast. We'll do eight of them. Sheesh. Where's Louise? Then, not intelligent in all, period. And you did use your company's website to commit those crimes also too, right? Because those pictures were posted on your website. You did post them. We were talking directly to you. So... With that being said, that is also, too, going to put your company in trouble, too. And again, involving your company, you have some documents on your company that are not legit, like the LLCs. And that, too, they have to investigate and look into also while we're there. Because your company's name is in the police report. Everything's in the police report. Oh, well. It is what it is. I got to build me a wraparound screen today, too. That's going to be fun. But anyway, now you can't back the products up. And other people make great products. Uh, what I've seen already, fair contrast levels. Um, can't say proper color balance because it's not proper color balance. Really can't say that. 
And you can't do, and one of the things I've seen that's a misconception about some great screens is that they'll show a picture of the screen off and it'll have all the lights on. That doesn't really mean anything. You literally have to have your lights on to see how the screen's going to react, especially the contrast levels. Definitely gonna need that. I don't know why they skip that. What they do. Do we have a scoop? I think we have we need a uh, tablespoon. I think we'll buy me a tablespoon. We got two tablespoons of black paint and the white paint. So we're gonna make the Metallica mix 2.0. We made it before, but that's what we're gonna make. Now and if you feel at the end of the day that I'm lying about the Metallica mix not matching the best of your products, the, the, it's something that you can make it for free. You just make it, do a live stream, which we know you're not going to do. I'm just wasting my breath here and my time and life. Just, I'm wasting the few seconds of my life just making this statement, but we'll do it anyway. Just make it and basically show everybody. That's all. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. But we'll never see it. Um, let me see. Come over here for a minute. And anyone else that makes a great product, I'm going to give you the exact same challenge. Um, I'm going to change. Let me see. Where is, where is it at? Now, if you want to challenge me in court, does my product match black paint? Knock yourself out. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Because you waste my time. That's why it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Lawyers will be involved in that one. So if anyone sits there and says, hey, I bet your product matches, challenge me. I've done so many demonstrations, it's not even funny. As a matter of fact, we're so bold on that that we know that our products are matched black paint. We offer the trolls to send us black paint by certified letters, and we still haven't received their stuff yet. I got to go to Home Depot and buy black paint now. I was supposed to get it for free, but we never got it. So, if anyone feels the need that they want to basically say, oh, I'm going to challenge your product black, then it's going to cost you half a million dollars. I'm dead serious. I'm going to sue the living crap out of you for wasting my time. So, we got a half a million dollars to give away? Contact me. I get so bored when I do black on black demonstrations. That would have been the ultimate black on black demonstration to have a troll send us down black paint. I was looking forward to that. I'm not gonna buy it myself. <sighs> I don't know, whatever. Okay, we got music on this one. Let me turn some visual. We got visual on this one. Vertical screen, beautiful butterflies. Why? This thing does not. I got to calibrate this microphone. I swear. Vertical screen saber, beautiful butterflies. Oh, you definitely have to be calibrated. What is going on with you? Try again. Microphone. Why the microphone over there much better than over here? Vertical screen savers. Thing is actually at least I'm not playing me. I have to unplug this and put this back in. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try you again. I shouldn't have to have the microphone this close to my face ever. Vertical screen savers. So what is giving off sound? Let's just bring it closer to over here. So that way it pulls up on that side. Could have used these right here when I was doing the demonstration on the giant vertical screen. Couldn't find vertical videos for Jack. Now they're all over the place. They're all over the place. 
Ooh, minus 30 seconds. What's this right here? Oh, give me, give me, give me. Got some beautiful butterflies on that one. So it was a day and get my workout in and then basically uh one day. man it's t-shirt weather let me see okay channel's popping off right now we loaded some videos up today actually we did the our technology on the splatter screen all right so we got the we're gonna make a curved screen we're well, not gonna be quite curved screen but it's gonna be an interesting screen we're gonna make for projector mapping so that high is 55 oh come on spring fight for it I need one weather man I'm telling you I gotta get one of those watches that basically tell you how many miles that you walk because I walk from, let's see, everything in here is walking distance. But if I'm going to real challenge, I can walk from 5th all the way to 15. And man, Allentown has some insane hills, man. It's a good workout. Definitely a good workout. That's why I said, nobody in Allentown should have any kind of cardio, heart issues, nothing. You climb them hills all day long, you should be in really good shape. I mean, extremely good shape. Should be in really good shape. All right. The yeah. The future wow. of your business is here. Yeah, we're doing it right now. What's that for me? Vertical screen savers, space invaders. Mm, yeah. This mic literally has to be calibrated. I'll get a brand new one. It's a shame. I like this mic. How come it worked over here? Let me see it for a minute. We don't have a screen there. Nothing there in the middle. So I can put that right there because the screen's here and here. So let me see. Let me try this again. I don't know why it's not picking up. Vertical Space Invaders. Oh, that's weird. So it doesn't register here, but it registers over there. Okay. What the freak is coming over there? Vertical Space Invaders screensaver. Vertical. No, not article. Vertical. The freak. Vertical Space Invaders screensaver. Oh, I swear. No, that can't do it. That definitely can't be done. 
I want to fix the drivers. And I probably gotta update my drivers. I haven't updated the drivers on this in so long, God knows how long. Vertical Space Invader Screensaver. Can you let me finish, for goodness sakes? Gee whiz! Vertical Space Invader Screensaver. I'm not speaking French. Literally. This is the reason why I hate freaking um, voice activated software. I can't stand this stuff because, again, it never works correctly. I literally sit there and watch my friends argue with their Google lights and their freaking um, Alexis lights. Alexis, I said lights on. Lights on. I said lights on. I'm like, really? Seriously? Just turn it on. Have we gotten that lazy? Buddy, I've gotten that lazy myself. I can't say myself. I'm sitting here screaming inside of a microphone or a keyboard. She was. Look at my beautiful fish. Vertical screensavers. Oh, shoot. We had that right there. Hold on for a minute. It's right there. I need to spell half of it. Vertical. Gee, I wanted the space in here. I need to get my retro pie down here. Get a retro pie down here somewhere. I'll put you right there. Just for a minute. Uh, let's go with, um, let me see. Starfield screensaver. That's a 50 lumen projector, by the way. My, actually, it's the only unnamed brand projector. It really works with our product. I wish you made them in bigger projectors because it actually works perfectly with our screen paint process and we've had this projector for quite some time we've had it for a couple of years i mean a lot of couple of years and it's a magsonic it works perfectly 50 lumens registers on a technology no problem gray screen paint badoosh right there that's the reason why we can't use gray screens anywhere i can't use this for my desk i'm gonna do a dark in my environment to get the screen to work well Get rid of Old Faithful, go spend $3,100 for a projector to beef my contrast levels up or whatever I got to pay for at the end of the day. That's not going to work. It's going to cost me too much money. And I'm still going to be stuck in the dark because it just don't work. So a basic star filled screensaver, I can't read it. Now, for some saying, what about the white level? I stuff you can generate next to a white screen or white levels. So I can generate at 50 lumens over here on a white level. Because we're not at that sacrifice line where the screen comes up so dark, you can't see it. That's why the black versus black tests are important. This is why when gray screens are supposed to have these tests on called gray versus gray. So they can show the difference between the gray product and Home Depot product, Lowe's, and so forth. Other gray screen paint products, which one of those pull better contrast levels? And I mean, you have to show a difference between night and day like you're seeing over there. Which one of those shows better colors than the other screens? Which one can produce and fully lit environments better than the other screens? That's what you're going to have to show. But we never see them at all. And the reason why we don't see them, because you match them, that's why. Is my microphone there? White screen saver. Because we tested our product so by testing our products against other black surfaces films fabrics you name it we've done the test different forms of paints all that stuff we know that those paints don't register they come up so dark you can't even see the screen because they don't have a white level in it which means they don't have something called the heightener capability which is that heightener technology we developed that allows the screen to be to read a higher white level but a gray screen honestly can't come out there and say, well, we're better than other gray screens. How? How are you other better than other gray screens? So you pull a high rear contrast level, we, or you can both pull white levels. We know that from the door. 
but can you pull a heavier white, I'm sorry, contrast level? Do you pull better color? Can we see these demonstrations? We don't see any of these demonstrations. You know why? Because they'll match, that's why. Four K snow Christmas cottage. Ta da! Now mind, we do this on a white surface, and this is where we usually test our white levels on. Not gray. Why would I test it on gray? It's not even fun at the end of the day. It's too easy. A white surface is what we test it against. So if a white surface can't turn that black technology unwatchable, what makes you think a gray screen is gonna do it? We got our beautiful flowers over here. I'm gonna pause that for a minute. Take our gray screen oh, and stick it on my 50 lumen projector over here and show you that we can't even pick up our colors correctly. Oh, we got it in blow up mode. There we go. A wide screen mode where I put it. Red screen. Commercial. No commercial. You don't pick up your colors correctly at all. Blue screen. Blue screen. See? So I'll wash out the color is. And I have to read contrast on this desk. So if we bring up my star field. Starfield screensaver. Let's see if this butchered it. Oh yeah, of course. It does not read it. Let's see right there. How much this microphone is not too fixed? I'll get another one. I had it for like five years. Starfield screensaver. It's not connecting at all. All right, I'm about to get a microphone system. Let's type it in. Right here. Hmm. Star Fox. No, Star Field. Use this one. Shows the atmosphere. Here we go. Doesn't read. It's got to pick up the 100% contrast level. What's going on over here? Let's see. OLED LG thousand lumens seven twenty p. First time we did the desk, the first thing I was asked was how come this, this how come we didn't use gray screen paint? Because it won't read. That's why. Samsung LG demonstration. It won't work. There you go. And watch stove demonstration. The thing about it is that when I come on here and I make a statement that the gray screen doesn't read, 
You get some people get butt hurt at the end of the day, and they go, "Oh, you're doing it just a slant." We used to make it back in the day. We know what it can do and what it can't do. So no one's saying it to basically say that uh, to do it to hurt your feelings at the end of the day. It's truth. It doesn't really register anymore. It used to register when all you had was a white screen to deal with. That's all. Yeah, then it was much better than a white screen. But now you got products out there that can put that to shame with no problem whatsoever, including us. And the gunmetal technology. You can't handle the truth. That's the problem. And then when you can't handle the truth, you lash out and you start doing fake demonstrations against our products. And this is what landed you a lawsuit. So when you go to court, you're just going to have to back up exactly everything that you said about the screen being unwatchable, which is going to be a problem because a lot of people have this screen paint, including on company sites. So this is going to be a problem for you. Mind you, while we're dragging you in and out of court, I'm going to be on site with this black technology. So this is going to be a problem. This is going to get you in a lot of trouble. So the reason why he became that on the offense of toward our products, because he said it's not true. You basically went in and got yourself sued in criminal charges for going out and attacking me because you felt that I was attacking your company by saying that gray screens can't read 100% contrast when it's actually true and can't register color when it's actually true. So, as I said before, you want to put 200K on the line and say, hey, let's go to court on this, and I bet you I win. I bet you my screen will say 100% contrast level. Hey, I'm more than welcome to go take that money from you. Because it doesn't. So your way of basically trying to get back at my company was to go out and spread false rumors that my product doesn't work. Because you know deep down inside, yours doesn't. Court's going to ask if you ever purchased this product before. Do you have any receipts back in your theory? You don't have anything because the only thing you ordered from me was a 2.0, and that wasn't black technology. But I can show tons of receipts where I've ordered from you. Actually, items, uh, orders where we got canceled and unboxings where I've had your products down here for testing. And it didn't work. Even the free mixture that you give away for free doesn't work. Even giving you challenges telling you to go out and put these products against your products to prove that I'm wrong, and you never done it. And the ones you did do, you failed. So technically, at the end of the day, you got yourself slammed for lawsuit and criminal charges because you were mad because I made a statement that your screen paint products don't work. They don't recontrast, they don't recolor, they don't pick up in fully lit environments, they don't work on any of the applications that we do. You don't do my applications at the end of the day. You don't do projector mapping, you don't paint on ceilings, you don't do floors, you're not in commercial environments, you don't do any of that at all. But tell me when you have a demonstration where you can show 30 to 40 demonstrations of you walking through a commercial environment with a $175 ultra shirt throwing, pulling up in every environment. Show me one. You don't have any, do you? No, you don't. So, with that being said, you don't have the experience level that I have that I've had on your products. I have more experience test demonstrations on your own product than you have. Because when I went to your site to find these, to match our demonstrations we have done, we couldn't find anything. Heck, most of your videos were deleted. At one point, you said the Frankenstein was ambient like rejection. And we have it right there in recording at 149. If you saying that the paint was ambient like rejection, but you stated it never was. So you flip back and forth, you lie constantly all the time. So you're mad, that's what made you, that's what got you into trouble that you're in. Mr. Fernando got himself in trouble. Because he got mad because I made a statement that the gray paint do not read. Now, again, you can take me to court on that. But you can't because you know I'm 100% right that they don't read, they don't pick up contrast or color, they can pick up a white level, the picture quality is poor, can't use it in any of the applications that we do at the end of the day because it doesn't even work right. They require expensive projectors to function somewhat correctly, but not they don't really work at all. And they really don't work in the dark at all, period. Now, say so you're coming out and backing your theory and showing that I was wrong, you just lashed out at my company and did false unboxings and police took pictures of me and did all kinds of weird stuff and they stalked my companies, stalked my places where I lived at, and this is what got you criminal charges. This is what's going to get you, you're going to court to be sued for. So, you're just going to have to back it up when we reach court that my product does this. And if it doesn't, you lose your shirt in that, in that courtroom. But I can back up 100%. Your stuff doesn't work. 
And that's why, two ways this is going to go down. I'll be challenging you in court for accusations you made against me and for my pictures and all the other stuff you've done, including our copyrights. And I'll be bringing you back to court, basically, for challenging your company. That the statements that I made were 100% right, that your product does not work correctly, and you have been misleading and basically ripping off your customers. That's what I'm going to do. In between that time, you can take me to court anytime you want. But the problem is that you can't, and the reason why is because you know your product doesn't work. 100% you know it doesn't work. But you will lie and cheat on camera, do anything you can at the end of the day. And I can prove that to the courts that this man even faked that he moved. Got on there and lied in front of his customers and faked like he moved and never moved. So at the same time, you were in the same place the entire time. Gee whiz. I mean, at that, I wouldn't even, I would not trust you with anything. You're going to lie on that level. God knows what else you lie on. You're not a very trustworthy business person at the end of the day. You're really not. So you have the opportunity to take me to court. And I've been talking about this product for a long time. You have never made any statements about taking me to court at all, period. Because your product is obsolete and it doesn't work. And you've been lying to your customers, trying to make them believe that your product does more than what it's claimed to do. And it doesn't. You're a rip-off artist. Now you can sit there and say, well, I did the apple. No, you didn't do the apple barrel. You went in and you basically smeared black paint around the top of your smell. We saw it. I don't know why in the world you think no one was going to pick it up, but we saw it. Everybody saw it that you put black paint in there. And, and again, why was the seal already broken for the demonstration? That seal should have never been broken. That should have been a fresh container with an unbroken seal because you're known for tampering with products. But you thought you'd cheat and get away with it, as always. That's the sad part about it. Anybody else who feels the need, you make great products, and you feel that statements that I have made are not real, you bring me to court. That's what you do. But I'm going to warn you, you waste my time, it's going to cost you a half a million dollars. Because I'm going to sue you for that much money for wasting my time. I'm very busy. I don't have time for nonsense. Back it up 100% or don't even bother contacting me. Because if you can't back it up and you're saying that, that your gray paint does what this stuff does at the end of the day, it generates an infinity contrast level, hey, that's not going to happen. You can't pick it up and you can't see it. I've already tested. You can sit there and say, well, what's your test level? What have you tested? What haven't we tested? What certified screens haven't we tested already? If I go to Amazon right now, there's nothing on Amazon for me. Amazon has Goose Screen. We tested Goose Screen already. We tested Goose Screens, actually that Ultra Max, I think is the darkest paint that they make. We tested that already. Paint on screens, we did them too also too. Got the unboxing videos. Did their product also too. What else we had? Those are the only two I see on there. The only two I see on the site on Amazon. You go over to uh, eBay, there's goo screen. There's no panel screens on over there, but there's goo screen. There's smarter surface. And we tested them too. We tested their high performance dark screen paints. Got it right there under the desk. That's all that's left. There's nothing else on there. And then it's the, uh, I'm sorry, there's the Pro HD. We tested that product too. So what else do we have? That's it. That's all we have. And the other one, which is Crow's product, well, I can't begin to tell you the freaking nightmare and freaking embarrassed behind that product, because we've had it down here so much it's not even funny. We had it down here for unboxing, for testing videos. We've had it match other house paints. We had it match the freaking free paint he gives you out for free. We got a stack of cancellations. I'm crying on cancellations. We got an email saying, hey, buy whatever you want, and then still cried on the, on the receipts. We got the other one that removed an entire state of Pennsylvania to keep us from buying, including $700 worth of cancel orders, and on top of that, removed to the entire marketplace to keep us from buying from us. Yeah, there's a lot of hope in that. So what else do we have left? When we've got Diamond, we've done every certified screen. Only screens that we can't touch are the ones that won't come near us with a 10-foot pole. Other than that, it's only one. That's it. We're done. So with that being said, boop, boop, ba -doo, ba -doo. yeah, we, we've done it already.
So you can't say we haven't tested your stuff. Let me see. Oh, look at you, Fuzzy Duzzy. Fuzzy Duzzy, Mr. Fuzzy Duzzy. Fuzzy Duzzy. Fuzzy Duzzy. We got here for time. I want to get down here and get this glue. Let me get the glue. The glue. Why do they shine the flashlight on the screen? I can never understand that one. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, they're supposed to be shining an amulet rejection? I got an amulet. Once we launched that FLE technology, that sunlight killer, oh man, all you amulet rejection screen paints out there or projection screens, we got a challenge for you. 100,000 bucks of light transferred through at only 5,000 lumens. I got one for you. You're more than a flashlight, you're going to take a direct hit from sunlight. That's going to be brutal. And I mean real brutal. That's going to be brutal. I can't wait for that stuff to launch. I got the investors coming down at the end of the summer. I got a building already to rent out to display that technology to have them coming for the meeting. Oh, it is going to be goody, goody gumdrops. Good tea, good tea gumdrops, people. Good tea, good tea gumdrops. And while we're taking care of all that business, you guys are going to be in and out of court for lawsuits. That's what that's going to be going down to. And you're going to pay me for my time, too. Because I had to tell the judge, look, I had to come in and I got to basically postpone business meeting. You're going to pay me for my time. So it's going to cost you some more money than that $12,000. I'm going to sue you for other stuff, too. Pain, suffering, mental anguish, all that stuff. I'm suing you for everything. Taking my time off of my work, I gotta come in and deal with this dumb nonsense because somebody got jealous because their product don't back up at the end of the day. And if you go up there and say, well, he made an accusation, my product matches house paint. It doesn't match house paint, Your Honor. Here's a video he deleted off his account showing his product matching house paint. This is Mr. Fernando in the red hoodie. Bearing the receipt showing the network grade 773. This is our demonstration we did six months to a year ago, basically saying his product was matching house paint. He did the demonstration, and this is what we got. Try to convince a judge that that product doesn't match house paint. I guarantee you, you're not. It's not going to. You're not going to win that case. We put those pictures up on a form site and asked people their honest opinion. Do they think they're two different screens? Everybody says the same screen. One person, which one's who and who's what? Yeah, they look exactly the same. And then we'll basically, if you bring that up, we'll tell the judge in the day. And he continued to sell the product long after finding out that the product was matching house paint, deceiving his customers. And they're gonna ask you, was that true? You're gonna say no. And we're gonna pull videos up that we can show that we went to your website and we saw you selling the same product long after you found out. And even the conversations we had on your site of you cursing us out. Go ahead, play around. We got so much evidence on you, it's not even funny. Even mention anything in that courtroom, anything to defend yourself, you're gonna get crushed in that courtroom. We got so much stuff on you, it's not funny. You say anything, you incriminate yourself even worse. I would just be quiet. Take the hit and just go home. Because if you mention anything about your company, anything about us, about how we went in and said your product matches it together, we have recordings of you actually matching house paint products. Even recordings of you trying to remove videos, trying to hide evidence. You'll incriminate yourself. And then once they dig into that, we'll bring up the LLCs. Showing you that your documents are missing. You're operating a business with an LLC. 
and your LLC has basically it's in delinquent files because again you don't have the documents to prove that it actually is in good standing you're missing sensible documents also showing that we can show that you put down on your your documents next to the attorney at uh, LegalZoom that you stated that your company was five months now I'm pretty sure that attorney who signed that document is also too going to file some some paperwork against you because again they're going to contact them also too you know they're going to be contacted right and they're going to say well I didn't know about that at all period all I know is basically he said he signed it to the best of his knowledge and that he said he was 100% truthful when he signed the document that's what you did did you not so it's not the attorney's fault. All the attorney did was just sign off. It's your job to tell the truth. That's what your job is to do. So that attorney can turn around and follow something against you for lying and committing perjury. So you better not bring that up either. So I don't know what you're going to do. And it's not, I don't even care at the end of the day. I'm just going to go into court follow on my documents get everything done oh by the way you're gonna pay for all court costs too so anything I got to pay for you'll pay for that I can get that out of you and the process server so I'll be suing you for the process server I got to pay and I'll be suing you for all court costs which I get that anyway I get that back anyway let's look at that back up I win which I have no problem winning and feel free to have your lawyer call me and say hey Oh, well, matter of fact, go talk to you, Lord. Say, I went on YouTube, and I took this guy's photo, and I made all these weird quotes at him, and I basically slandered this guy all over YouTube. Can he sue me? And he's going to say, yes, he can. He can sue you for a lot of money. That's what he's going to tell you. Well, I went out and basically did false accusation against his products and said his products were nothing more than bike paint, and they don't function, they don't work. Can he sue me? Oh, yes, he can. It's called slander and defamation. He can sue you for this. That's why attorney hasn't contacted us because you already talked to one already and he already told you that you can be sued. So we'll see you in court. And they're going to also ask were there any other people that were involved and this is where the rest of you guys are going to pop up. Mr. Williams, all of you, you're going to be mentioned in that courtroom. You're going to be in those documents. And that's why the private investigator, when the judge said, how do you know where the whereabouts of these individuals? Your Honor, we had to hire a private investigator, which means you'll be paying me that money back to also. The money I had to put out for the private investigator to track the rest of you guys down so we bring the court to see you. So you're all going to get everything back. What video is this? It's actually pretty good. It'll be a while before the criminal charges pop up. Well, we can sue you right away. That's what I'm doing. But the criminal charge is going to take a while to get there. But the lawsuits, on the other hand, I can get them knocked out before the summer hits and get you guys. So that's what we're doing. We're filing the lawsuits right away. And that means you're still going to be working. Which means under that lawsuit, once I go file the execution of judgment, Part of your paycheck goes to me. Your income tax goes to me. Every time we have to file that document and we have to bring you in court to sue you, keep in mind they're going to take a little bit more. Anything that adds up to the interest that you're going to pay me, including the official lawsuit, you're going to have to pay up. So, kind of like in a way, you'll be working for me. 4K demonstrations. Because you'll be paying me. If you have an insurance policy, I can take that. College fund money, I can take all that. I can just take everything. Freeze your banking accounts, debit cards, all that stuff. And the minute that lawsuit goes through, your credit is destroyed. Because now you have a lien on you. Got sued. 
your credit's gone. And if you're married, which I'm going to find out from my, uh, I got to talk to a friend of mine, he's an attorney, he's not going to be involved in this case because it's a small claims court, but he just gave me information I need. I could possibly carry that lawsuit over to your spouse. That's why you don't do dumb stuff. Now, if you decide to get the smart idea of taking things and sign it over into other people's names, not only will this get you criminal charges, and this is definitely a felony, but the person who's involved in this can also, too, be hit with something. So it's like kind of like if a person breaks out of jail and you hide them, and you basically keep anyone from knowing where they're at, and you're going to be locked up for that also, too. So I would advise your friends or relatives or whatever not to get involved in that. Because my investigator will find out exactly that paper trail and where that money went to. Because if you've been paying to the bank for all this time on a house, and all of a sudden it just switches over into someone else's name, they're going to know. So you don't get away with that kind of stuff. You get caught on that real easy. What do we have playing at the same time? We have two things playing at the same time. There we go. So don't do that. Because I've had that happen in a lawsuit. I sued somebody for $50,000 and they tried to switch all the information to somebody else's name and we caught them. Because if you've been paying on the bank all that time and then the minute this lawsuit pops up, it just switches. Yeah, that, come on, man. It's just so easy at the end of the day. See, that's a red flag right there for the door. And most people won't even be bothered with that because they don't want to get involved in it, period. Most likely on my behalf, if someone did do that for him, I wouldn't even bother going after him. They just made a really dumb decision. That's what they did. Most people will. They would go after the other person, but I don't care. We just want him. That's all that matters. But the other half on the courts, it, I don't know how they're going to do it. Again, well, let's get back to your obsolete paints. And like I said, this is what it all came down to. Because they got mad because their products don't work. Now, I've given you gentlemen plenty, plenty of room to breathe. If you feel the accusations that I made against your great products or whatever your paints are than it is don't work, you take me to court for it. But you can't because you know your products don't work. Danny can't back up his range gain theory. Doesn't work at all. I'm taking your company to court for that. Your products are not made by scratch. Your rear projection doesn't even work at the end of the day. And half the stuff you have in your specifications is not even freaking real. In fact, your paint is not even black. It's actually gray. You can show the court set with no problem. The review you had, you know, you did a review on your product. The other guy, Silent Wake, did that review. And also, too, the phantom technologies you claim that's supposed to be ours, it's also you're being sued for that. Because you made an accusation that that's my product. So I definitely want to see receipts. They want to see receipts, they want to see documents that you ordered that directly from our website, and that is our actual product. If not, it's going to land your lawsuit. And I'm going to say it every day. Gray screens, not worth your time. They don't work. They don't function correctly. They did at one point. They did a fantastic job at one point. Because we used to make them. But now they're outdated and they're old. You paint one of these on your screen, all you're doing is just priming it for us. That's all you're doing. The Series C mess, no one knows what the freak that stuff is. Two demonstrations. It couldn't even get the color correct. It came out gray in both attempts. Range gain doesn't exist. That's a lie. Another product on that goopity goo nonsense. Whew. Half of that was water. Claiming to be some kind of delivery system to keep the product from drying out. That's fake. Rear projection train capabilities, fake. There's not even enough information talking about rear projection. 
He doesn't even have enough knowledge in rear projection technology. We stole images off of Google. Image you have right now, talking about Parte's installment. In the gymnasium, that's actually a church, not a gymnasium. complain to the courts that we never try to buy your product I can show multiple cancellations and even you removing an entire state of PA and also to my friends over in Texas which will be placing orders soon and they'll let you know they'll be buying for me I'll see you cancel their orders too also so your product doesn't work you haven't been here long enough you don't even have enough testing on your product at all period to back up any of your theories and the fact that you basically made a statement that your product basically from the same paint can actually transfer two gains and you can't show any demonstrations on how this is done and you're selling this product like this, that's fraud. So you go into a car dealership and you go buy a car and they got it listed that this particular car runs off water. And you find it doesn't run off water, it just runs off regular gasoline. So you bought that car solely thinking it ran off water but it doesn't it runs off gasoline so someone lied to you and made you believe something that's not true and when you ask them to back this theory up they say well we don't have any uh we don't have anything to really explain that but it does that's not enough for people they want to know that it actually does so that means that you sold a vehicle on false pretenses making the consumer believe that this was actually something that was real when it wasn't the entire time. And that means you committed fraud. And that's what range gain is, fraud. That's why before I can go in there and talk about projector mapping applications, screens able to absorb sunlight, work at a thousand lumens, work at 50 lumens, all that stuff, everything has to be displayed so I can back it up. You know, when uh, Solid Way 5 came on his camera and there said that I use only 4,000, 5,000 lumen projectors, that's going to cost you, my man, for making that statement. I'm going to sue the daylights out of you for saying that. Making statements that I use special camera equipment to make my screens. I'm suing you for that too. These are the lawsuit that Jamie's being hit with. That whole nonsense about using special cameras to make our screen doing something. Yeah, you're getting sued for that. That's a separate lawsuit. That's why there's eight of them. Individual lawsuits. Reach out. We said something dumb out of your mouth. But making statements that we have to use 4,000, 5,000 lumens. But you got them in a recording state and making a statement. I'm going to sue you for that. That's slander against my company. So how are we able to operate these machines if that's the case? And I can show the court tons of test demonstrations used on projectors are with thousand lumens or lower. And just to make things even more interesting, if you do show up for court, which I doubt you are, I'm going to have you take Old Faithful, I'm going to have you paint my screen in, and I'm going to have you do that demonstration. Now, if that old faithful pops up on my screen paint and it pulls up with no problem, how are you going to explain that to a judge? Say goodbye to your house. Because that's all I want. I don't want any money out of you. I want your house. That's what I want. Because you cried about it on camera. That's why I want it now. That's why I want it. I don't care about... You couldn't pay me jacket the day. I'm taking the house. So that's what you're going to do because you made that statement. You also made the statement that the product under that black series not black series the phantom that was my product in the container you also made that statement too also so you're getting sued on that too so if you don't have any receipts you can't show any proof that that's our product in any way whatsoever and if it doesn't react under our own technology you got problems No, I don't want your money. I want that house. That's all I want. That's what I'm taking. 
You cried about it on camera. That's why. You should have cried about it. It's my turn now, gentlemen. You went out. You slated my products. You made false accusations against my company. Try to tarnish my good name. And now it's my turn. I told you they're going to come for you. I'm not joking with you. I'm not playing with you. I'm coming for you. It's my turn now. Where are you at? We have four lines in here. Where you should be hitting. Hey. Oh, you're in there, but you're not in there. Still. So you fair. Gotta pay for it, man. You gotta pay for it. That's why we're having a problem. Why is that cord there like that? Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. It's right there. I swear. That when people talk about how when you try to plug something in, it feels like you got somebody pushing your your um your control or something out of the way to play out of the way so it doesn't fit in. I keep forgetting that the uh, projectors we have here have USBs that can charge my phone off my projector, which is pretty cool, ain't it? But anyway, yeah. So it's my turn now. I sat back while you went and carried on, and made false accusations. We got you guys in Zoom calls, talking and having conversations, and showing the courts that you all know each other. So even if you try to get in there and deny that you don't even know each other at the end of the day, we can show that you do know each other. Matter of fact, you talk quite about about your families in that whole Zoom call. And keep in mind, while you were doing that Crow's podcast, you used my copyrighted logo as your thumbnail. And you're all going to be sued for that one. So I'll be going to the CCB and I'll be filing a lawsuit against... The people that were involved in actually using my copyrights without my permission. So that'll be another thirty thousand dollars. Now you know where I'm at. You know how to reach me. The thing about it is the reason why y'all don't want to give up addresses. You hid behind, you got scared. That's why you can't ship out the item because your address will be on it. We know you're afraid to get the address up. But don't worry, as I said before, my friend who's a private investigator, heck, he can trap people across the globe. He'll find you. And I'll get you in court. And I'll sue the daylights out of you. The money I got to pay him, you're going to give it right back. I'm going to explain to the courts I had a prior private investigator to track you. You'll be responsible for paying all that back. Jeez. I figure, what's my day going to cost me? I got to take a day off to go in there and handle this mess. So you're going to pay me my day's worth wages worth my work. You're definitely going to pay me on that. So I got to come off of this mess. And all this came down because they're upset because their products don't work. That's why they're mad. That's why they're upset. tell you that's a good weight set I like that one one thing I liked about that place I'm gonna see if I can buy some good weights out of there they had the old joints from back in the day and they had the vintage weights at the Karen place I'm gonna at least go in there and get at least a thousand dollars worth of their weights because they had the old joints from back in the day those are good ones ones they make the day are okay but they're not that good I don't like them too much Whew. Mad about it, gentlemen. Here's what it is. 
some other babies. It's my big boys. Feels good to be back. I hate the fact that it couldn't work out. It drove me crazy. That's what I would love to do. It'd be funny to watch. I like to put a heavy pack on you jokers. Stick you out 80 miles out in the woods. And have you put you through some uh some uh some training. See how many one of you how many guys would drop? Because you don't look like you're in shape at all, period. At all. You look slow and sluggish. I'd love to put you through a training exercise. I got a niece who's a black ops up in Arizona. She got a training camp up there. I'll pay for you to go up there with me. See how long you last. But you want to can even do five push-ups. Five. Can you give me five? Can you give me diamondbacks? I can't forget it. And the other one, sure. My goodness. Oh, man. Bye, sit All right. Gentlemen, products don't work because I got to finish the rest of my workout. But your products don't work at all. The reason why you're upset and the reason why you're angry with me is because I can prove it doesn't work. And you know it doesn't work. And what got you in the hot water to begin with is because you did false demonstrations against my products. You spread false lies about me. So we go to court between April, May, and June. Because these are several lawsuits, not one law, it's a bunch of lawsuits coming up. You got a chance to explain to a judge. And you said, I'm a scammer and ripping people off. Here's your opportunity. You don't show up, I'll let it be known you didn't show up. So up to you and until then if you feel that my accusations about the range gain and your products matching house paint and all the other three suits nonsense I've been seeing on your products if all that's fake and your product really does do these things at the end of the day as you say then I would love to see the videos which we know we're never going to see because I've been asking for that for years but you can take me to court on it and when I said at the gray screen doesn't read a contrast level it doesn't. Jamie, if you want to take me to court, we can sign a contract right now for 200 k You go into court and you prove that that gray screen paint product you got reads 100% contrast next to this technology. Of course you're not going to sign it. Because you know why? You know I'm right 100%. Oh, man. It doesn't work. Got to be honest with your customers. sit there and tell my customer that a black technology pulls 100% white level? That's not even true. That's like when we introduce other screen paints. I don't come up there and say, oh, that color screen paint, the Scorch uh, uh, Pink Rose, that produces 100% contrast. That'd be a lie. Imperial Gunmetal, very dark screen. We never come up there and lie and say it produces 100% contrast. That's a lie. I'm not being honest with my customers, Bob, if I say that.
you guys get up there and you'll lie about your gain, you'll lie about your contrast. Heck, you even make statements about your screen being so easy that it could get painted. Ain't no pit painting in that freaking mess. First things all, you're not even painting in the screen when you first start off. You're just moving the paint around. That's not even painting the screen. Then you got this one step and two step and three step and light roller, heavy roller. That's a freaking headache. I gotta come in today, I gotta blast a curve, something like curve box system that I'm doing. It's gonna take me a couple minutes to blast and I'm done. That left, that's it. I'm trying to roll in there and blast today. I'm trying to figure out how I want to go with this. Huh. I think I'm gonna roll it in. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, and if I blast it and I gotta, because it's windy outside. So can we roll it in? Maybe we should be to roll it in. Again, I don't know what customer in their right mind. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you said to me. I don't know what customer in their right mind is going to believe that a gray screen is going to read a contrast level. Unless you're trying to tell people that with the ambient light projection nonsense. You're trying to tell people that your screens don't require ambient light rejection technology. That's a lie. Because that guy who had that 4K projector that went to destroy the screen. And he wasn't able to produce an image at all unless he was sitting in a dark environment. And I'm pretty sure the way he set up that environment for a screen that wasn't his intentions. Because if it was his intention to have in the dark, he would have never opened the curtains. Unless someone told him he could. It's sad that people settle for stuff like that. He sat there and said it's not even enjoyable. Not even enjoyable. Oh. said if you feel that your screen does the pulls that technology like mine and you file your lawsuit I'll see you in court but till then I'll see you in court in the next few months so actually next few months it'll be for April May and June we'll see you in court and I'll bring it up in there with the courts about your company making false accusations that you're making false statements to your customers that you're claiming that your products pull these heavy contrast levels and it's not real. Stop 
I swear. You need to put chin up bars. Like for every block, you need to put a chin up bar in. I think that'd be fantastic. They should. Sit up bars, sit up bench, and a chin up bar. I said that people who are overweight and you don't want to go to the gym because you're going to deal with jerks at the gym. You're going to deal with jerks. You know, you go in there and try to make the effort. They should be supporting you for the fact that you walked in the door and you're making the effort to try. But unfortunately, you got to deal with jerks. So, all right, still people, at the end of the day, get into a habit of working at home. Don't do the buddy system. Don't do that. If you get somebody that works out all the time, you know, you're going to grow to hate that sucker at the end of the day. He's going to push you. He's going to push you this, going to push you that, going to your Fuji, all that. Yeah, definitely. Which is good, but also too. And if you work out somebody with your same energy level, neither one of y'all may not make it to the gym. I tell people, get used to working at a home. You work at a home, there are no excuses. You're at home. I've seen people, a friend of mine, she was trying to lose some weight. And she wanted to go to the gym. She had her buddies and all. They go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. And they're playing around. They're not even taking it seriously. It's almost like, a, like they're having a little gathering there. You know? And then if that person makes an excuse that why they don't want to go to the gym, then the other person uses that as an excuse why they can't go. Or if it's raining outside, they may say, well, I can't go. You know, it's raining, it's snowing, so on, so on, so on. But if you get used to working at home, there is no excuses because the gym is at home. It's always there. And as you start to gradually get used to working out, you'll notice you'll be on the treadmill more and more every single day. In the morning, you jump on the treadmill. Come home from work, you jump on the treadmill. On your day off, you'll be on the treadmill. And then, you know, if you want to go to the gym, you go to the gym. But usually, most people just work at home. You don't got the drama. You got the headache. You're in your own personal space, and you save a bunch of money. That's what you do. And I tell a lot of people, you don't work out, do it at home. That's the best way to do it. Don't get yourself a buddy. Don't do that. Because you're going to use your buddy as a crutch. Because you're using them as support. And if they don't show up, then what's going to happen to you? You're right back on the couch eating chips and all that other nonsense. That's what's going to happen. You better not just stop doing yourself. Like I said, when I was on those inhalers, all that stuff in the, the day, especially that prednisone. Ooh. I gotta thank, I gotta thank Mr. Fernando. Yeah. You're the reason why I'm back to my shape. You know why? Because that picture I saw me wearing the red shirt, made my stomach was sticking out. That's why I went in and got myself back to where I'm at now. Feels fantastic. Now I'm ready for t-shirt weather. Which I'm going down to Walmart. Picking up some nice X-Men t-shirts. And I need a, I need a uh, power twist bar. I need to get one of those next. I can take one away. And I got a bag in storage, so I'm going to grab my bag, too. Well, yeah. Got him to thank for that. Because prednisone, I was around 280 pounds. And I saw that picture, I was like, nope. That's not going to be me. No siree. No siree. I had to make that decision to cut a lot of things out of my diet.
and get my uh, get my body back to where I want to get it back to. That's what I had to do. Get back to exercising twice a day, so I don't have to. Uh, I don't want to go out like that. And he took it as when I said that he was overweight because he is overweight. It's not fat shaming. It isn't. You literally need to lose weight. If not, you're going to mess around one day and you ain't going to be able to breathe correctly. And you don't want that crap at the end of the day. Ain't nobody shaming. You need to lose weight. I've got three of my friends died from being overweight. I wish I would have told them at the end of the day. I wish I would have been putting more pressure on them, but I didn't do it. So I had to go to a funeral. That's where that came from. And this guilt that I could have fixed the situation and didn't do it. Because I was afraid of hurting someone's feelings at the end of the day. Now they're not here anymore. Well, he need to lose weight. When I see him bend over to go, uh, whatever that service, and all the rolls are coming out, I go, oh, shoot. Dude, you are an easy candidate for a heart attack. Diabetes, arthritis, all kinds of stuff. Shouldn't be eating any of that food you've been posting. Just go out and work out, get on a diet, and lose that stuff. If not, you're going to be around. And the jacked up thing about that situation is you never know what's going on inside that's the mess the part of it. you might feel fantastic but deep down inside you never know what ticking time bomb is triggering off in your body that's the scary part you could be sitting there one minute and boom drop dead and be and, and gone and i've seen i had a friend of mine do that drop dead he died heart just decided that wasn't going to work anymore and you don't want heart disease and all that stuff oh man you don't want any of that stuff He's way overweight. And you can take that as, oh, he's being nasty. No, I'm not being nasty. There's a lot of things I can say to you at the end of the day to hurt your feelings. If you want to go down that road, I got a lot of things I can say to you right now to hurt your feelings. But I'm not that type of person. You need to literally lose weight. You're too big. You can't jog around your block without passing out. You're <laughs> definitely, and you don't look like you can do it. You need to lose weight, literally. If not, you ain't gonna be around much longer. Even the stress will kill you faster. Gotta lose that weight. All I did was just sit back and watch my friends self-destruct. I ain't stopping or anything whatsoever. And I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I saw it. I saw them gradually start to decline. Now, I have inhalers. I don't use them. They're kind of like a mental crutch. I can't remember from time to time, but I've used an inhaler in two years. And some people have to have those things on them, but again, you could basically make your breathing a lot more better if you exercise more and you eat right. Well, I can't say eat right because I eat like a five-year-old. I literally eat like a five-year-old. I'd lie you not. I eat like a five-year-old, but I work out six days a week, twice a week, so twice a day, so, you know kind of evens up for me. I don't know, it works for me. Some people don't, just for, for some reason, this works for me. So when I go, when I go buy Doritos and chips and stuff like that, they look at me like, wait a minute, you eat that? Like, yeah, what do you think I'm eating healthy? Heck no. I'm like a five-year-old. But I work out a lot. And I walk a lot. I prefer to walk all the time. So I burn off just about everything that I put back on. So, you know, he can take it and get up. He got up, last time he got upset. And I sat there and I saw him bend over to, to grab the surface. I'm like, good gracious. Like, dude, you really got to lose weight. Because, yeah, he's going to have a heart attack and he's going to die. Now, like I said, so, oh, he, he's fat shamey. Don't carry it up, man. Don't carry it up. C cut it out. Don't carry it up. I swear, if you was raising my military father and you said that nonsense, you got you to gotta got smacked in the mouth. First of all, you would never be that size to begin with. Because, yeah, you got to doing push-ups, sit-ups, all that stuff at the end of the day. You definitely would be cutting off your food to a certain degree, but you're just crying. Ain't nobody fat shaming you at all, period. Stop crying. Stop being a Karen at the end of the day. You need to lose weight. But if you don't, you know, you're going to find out. You wake up in the middle of the night and go, uh, 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 can't hardly breathe and can't figure out what the freak is going on because you're having problems. You don't want that at the end of the day. You really don't want that mess at the end of the day. Only reason why I was able to survive my lung disease, two reasons why, because of God, number one, and because when I went in and caught, when I got the mold poisoning, 
I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I worked out constantly all the time. So my body was in good shape when I got sick. So if I was a smoker, I was a heavy drinker and all anything involved in that, and I didn't take care of myself, I was overweight, that thing would have killed me. 40 years old, that was my body mass, 200 pounds at 40. Didn't know it was like to have a stomach, never had one ever, because I was a skinny kid growing up. And when I got into martial arts, I started building up my muscle mass because I wanted to be a hit hit harder, harder strikes. I wanted to be a much more bigger when I went to go fight my opponents. But then it became an addiction and I liked it because then it became, at one point it's like, oh God, this is freaking nothing but work. Like why do people do this to begin with? Like nothing but freaking work. Like I'm working to be working, like literally. And after a while it became an addiction. I kind of liked it. I liked that the way my body looked. I liked the way I felt healthier. I breathed, breathed better. I just, it just felt fantastic. And I just kept up with it and became an addiction. Then I got sick. And then when I got sick, they had me on those prednisones. They had me on the inhalers. And I couldn't work out anymore. At first, I lost weight. And then I broke up too much weight because of prednisone. And then I got fat. And then it got to a point where I just started to just accept it. Because I went to depression. I'm suffering to depression. So I just accepted this is the way it's going to be. I'm just going to be this person for the rest of my life. I can't breathe anymore. This is the way it's going to be. Until I saw that picture that Jamie sent over of me in the red shirt. And I was like, no, we can't do this. We can't. So if I'm going to work out, I'm going to die doing it. So, so I'm working out, so I stop breathing, so I, I, can't, my, I can't catch my breath, but I'm not going out this way. And eventually, it built my lungs up, made it better for me to breathe. And then with me praying and working with the Lord and everything, disease is gone. No more prednisones, no more Simicor, no more inhalers, nothing. I can walk up and down these hills all day long in the cold, the rain, whatever, stuff that I couldn't even do, I can still do it now. Back to normal, like it never even happened. So thank you so much. I appreciate that picture. Because at the end of the day, you probably thought that that was going to shame me. No. I told you at the end of the day, I, so when people do so, they tell me what I can't do, this and the other. I take it as a personal challenge. I go do it. Get it done. So now I'm back. And I love it when I talk. They move a little bit. They do move. They move all the time. I love it. Do, 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 do. I can't do the whole flex back and forth. I can't do all that capability yet. But them suckers do move. Oh, it feels good to be back. It does. It feels good to be back. No stomach. It feels good to be back. And right now, I got that. Right now, that urge to always work out all the time. That's why they got to put down these uh, the chin lifts. Oh, my goodness. Chin lift every block. Or every two blocks. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody would enjoy it. Just not the people that work out all the time, but everybody would enjoy it. It'd be fun, you know what I mean? They should do something cool. It's like put some speakers, some music, something that lights up, and then people can have fun with it. And that's why I don't like it when people basically, and I'm not making fun of him, he just has to lose weight. That's all to it. He has to. Or nice, he's going to have some problems. I mean, he doesn't already have problems, he's going to have problems. Too old to be that big. But, um, it's a shame when people do get the courage to go into a gym to work out. You got the jerks right there to destroy their confidence so they can go back in the same situation. That's the reason why they're there to try to be like you, not try to be like you, but try to get fit like you. I mean, take it as a, um, don't, don't tear people down in the day. Try to help them out in the day. You know what I mean? Motivate them, help them out. That's how you keep them coming back. And then sooner or later, they'll be just like you. And the next year, you know, somebody will come in and they'll be heavy like they used to be. And they can tell them their story and motivate them. That's how you build each other up. Not showboating, walking around, you know what I mean, trying to think they're better than everybody else. We got enough of those jerks on the planet as it is. That's like when I used to run track. When I used to run track back in the day, I remember every freaking New Year's Eve, we go on a, a New Year's Day run. So, New Year's Eve, everybody make their resolutions, lose weight, go and run track, da 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 And every time around that time, the track would be filled with all these people, you know, making these promises. And we have our little group that we would run with. And then we always, sometimes, always attract one or two, maybe three or five would run with our group. We don't have no problem with you can run with us, we have no problem with that. We accept everybody. But, as time went on, they started dropping off. 
But usually we'd have like one or two that would stay behind. And we'd work with them, help them to lose their weight. My buddy of mine was a dietitian. He would teach them and help them stuff on how to eat better and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You can call us anytime you want because, you know, if you need that emotional support, we got your back at the end of the day. We're trying to help you at the end of the day. So we're not trying to put them down. We're trying to build them up. And then sooner or later, they become one of the pack. They're one of the runners. And we get another new one that comes in, and that's how we do it. But you don't go in and look at them up and down like, what do you think you're supposed to be at the end of the day? That, 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 that. You're going to tear somebody down. They're trying to do something better for themselves. So, no, Jamie, I'm not tearing you down. Even though you do dumb stuff on me every single day and you say nasty things about me, I can easily say a lot of things about you because you are way overweight, but I'm not doing that. I'm telling you, you need to lose weight. If you don't, you're going to have some serious problems. They're going to pop up if you don't have them already. And again, it's not healthy. You could die. You need to basically work out. And watch what you eat. That particular point you do. You never know what's ticking inside. Yep. I had no idea that I breathed in that much mold. I got sick like that. I'm thinking maybe it's just a little flu because I'm coughing so much. Maybe that's it. Find that it wasn't. I breathed in enough mold. It should have killed me. But it didn't. The doctor told me if I smoked, I was overweight. It took my life. It didn't take my life. What you put in, what you get back out. Well, you know, I hate to say it. Jamie being the crier that he is, always wanted sympathy. He'll take it and run with it. And cry and whine and go, oh, you try to fat shame me. I'm pretty sure other people look at you differently. And they do. I can say it, that's how the world is. The world's a jacked up place. People will look at you if you're overweight and they'll snicker and say nasty things behind your back. It's wrong, you shouldn't do it because again, you can end up in the same situation very easily. Of course, I had to travel down the path myself because when I was doing all that lifting and then our training, never had, I was never overweight ever. So I kind of started picking up this arrogant side where I didn't think I was better than anybody else, but I felt that people at the end of the day that were that big, they were lazy and that they didn't really want to help themselves. They just rather eat and stuff their faces and never work out. They were just lazy at the end of the day. That's what I thought. They didn't even put in consideration that they could be suffering from some mental illness. They could be going through depression. Heck, they could have gotten sick. Medication could be making them heavy. It could be a number of things, but never even thought about that. But sometimes when God sees you acting that way, sometimes he has to put you in somebody else's shoes so you can see what that's like. And I got a chance to see what it was like. 280 is not big, but you know, I was I had my stomach sticking out and every time I want to sit down I can feel the my stomach pushing up under my heart and under my rib cage. It was uncomfortable. And even when I try to put on a t-shirt, I just would have this stomach just sticking out. I didn't like that at all, period. So I changed it. But it wasn't easy. It was extremely hard, it was. I mean, you're constantly eating this same junk over and over again. Now you got to tell yourself you can't have it. You walk to a supermarket, can't have this, can't have that, can't have this, can't have You got to tell yourself no. Yep. Even when you want it, you can't have it. Even when days when you're feeding yourself nothing but chicken broth every day. You're just feeding yourself five days. You're just drinking straight chicken broth to drop your weight. You're starving. You're hungry. You see things on the commercial that come on. You want to eat so badly, but you can't, you can't buy it. You can't have it. If you don't, you're going to go back to that. So I had to put my sacrifice in. I remember at one point I went too far with it because I was so hungry at one point. 
I could barely stand up, dizzy, and go spots from my eyes. And my family had to take me out and give me something to eat because I refused to buy anything. So now I got it down to my usual one meal a day, which I'm allowed to have. And I can have fast food once a month. I can pick whatever I want. Can't have a large quantity of it. I can pick out one thing I can have at the end of the month. So I got my places to go to. If I go to a pizza, get pizza, can't get a whole pizza. I have to get a slice. So, you know, I thought about that one time. I was like, can I, can I, eat, I can eat a whole large by myself. I was like, can I get a whole large? I'm like, nah, you, know, you can't do that. You can only have a slice. I'm talking to myself having this conversation while I'm ordering my pizza. You know what you got to do. You can only have a slice. That's it. If I want a hoagie, can't have the whole hoagie. I got to have half of the hoagie. So I give half, wrap it up. I take the other half, give it to my sister, or my dad, or somebody over there. Because I got family who live up in this area. I just give it to somebody. Somebody home, they can have it. But I can't have the whole hoagie. So I'm teaching myself discipline. I'm telling myself, no, you can't have something. That's the hard part. That's the hardest part of all. And especially when you go to barbecues, or you're on vacation. When I was on vacation, I ate like a horse. Ate like a horse. I trained all the time to figure out the next time I'm going to be in Disneyland, I eat like a horse. But I made sure that the, res the resort that I got had a gym in it. So that way when I came in, she would go upstairs and go to sleep. I would go straight to the gym and I would go work out. And then in the morning, I would go to the gym and work out again. So I was constantly keeping myself in shape while I was there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's all. Some people they're like, well, you work out to become big? No. No, I don't want that. I got friends of mine, I told you, friends of mine are big, big, big. On little hawks. They're not hawks, they're huge. They work out for massive body weight. That's not for me. That's not for me at all. I work out, I want a nice tone to my body. That's what I want. I love the fact of being 55 years old and having a face full of gray hair and having a nice tight body. I like that. Because my mom used to say, once you dye this, then you can have it black. No, I like my gray. I love it. I like the fact that at the end of the day that even if you're older, it's never too late to work out. It's never too late to get in shape. So, you know, you know, anybody, anybody can lose the weight. And anybody can basically get their body in shape. And don't let people put you down and tell you what you can and can't do at the end of the day. Because you can do it. You can definitely do it. My, I was going through a lung disease, and I had to get over that mental block of the lung disease, that this stuff was going to kill me eventually. You know, I was going to have a heart attack, I couldn't breathe, something was going to happen. And then the accumulation with the weight and all that stuff, and I had to get through all that mental, all that mental blockage. And that's where prayer comes in. But God will basically put you on track and tell you what you can do. If God tells you you can go out there and run a marathon, yeah, you'll be in shape. You'll run that marathon. Now, see, gentlemen, at the end of the day, how you're, I guess you find me quite confusing. How I can, I mean, I'm going to sue you. I have to do that because it's my company. I have to do that. It's part of the rules of business. You cross the line, and I have to get a court suit. But also try to give you advice at the same time. That's why I say I'm much more mature than you are. Because, again, when I call you, when I talk to you, I try to talk to you like a human being, but the ranting and carrying, I can't do that, okay? That's not for me. Even when I went to your site and I try to talk to you, the ranting and carrying, I can't do that. I'll talk to you regularly, and if you can't basically communicate with me on an adult level, then, I, you know, I, I leave. I don't have time for that. It's a waste of my time at that particular point. But I can also give you advice on, you know, that you need to lose weight. And... You can sit there and get angry on camera and rant and say, oh, he fat shaming. No, I didn't say he fat shamed you. I told you you need to lose weight. And you do need to lose weight. Go to a doctor, get up on a scale, and let them tell you. And they will tell you that you are overweight 
and you need to loose. Because literally, I can literally see when you're on camera, I can see the individual rolls on your side, and it shouldn't be there. You have to lose that weight. Unless you want to have walk around with a freaking uh, oxygen tank and tubes up your nose, so that's one thing I didn't want. It's not going to have that, you know. And I'm not putting anybody down that has that at the end of the day. But, you know, you'd be surprised. There's some people up there that I already hit that stage already, and they are doing things to try to do better and, and live a little bit longer. Anything helps at the end of the day. So, you want to take it as you go pull your camera and cry at the end of the day. But you are overweight and need to lose weight. You do. It's funny how this guy goes into these Karen cries when I make this statement, but yet you put a picture of me overweight sitting in a chair. Did you see me crying on camera about, oh my God, you fat, you know, see me doing that? No. I looked at that and said, I got to change that. I got to fix that. And I did. I fixed it. I don't have time for crying and whining. I wasn't raised that way. I was raised military. There's no crying and whining. None of that nonsense. Heck, we didn't even have a GoFundMe when I was going. You want money? You know what you did? You cut grass. You walk people's dogs. You wash windows. That's what you did. You know, you earned and worked for everything that you got in life. There's no doing things half percentage and lying on camera. You no, know, if you did something, you worked for it and you proved your product. And that's what you did. You back up yourself at the end of the day. Crying my generation. He actually should be in my generation. I was born 68. I'm older than him. So I'm not going to sit there and cry and whine about that. Because I sat on camera from here to there and cried and whine about that. No, I'd do something about it. Oh, I need to clean that. Where the freak is my... There we go. We've got a warm day today. I'm going to go out to the park and sit down. I'm going to go to the art museum today, too. The same person sends me a picture of me overweight, and it sits there and says, and you call me fat, so, and all kinds of nasty stuff at the end of the day. You know, I'm getting mad about that. I just change it, that's all. But you, I ain't call you curse words or anything like that, any bad things like that. I said you need to lose weight, and you do. Take off your shirt. Tell me you don't need to lose weight. Tell me you don't bend over. You can't feel your stomach pushing up under your belt. You need to lose weight. If not, you don't do it. You don't find yourself. Your family is walking around wearing a lot of black all day. Because that's what I went through. I should have told them. I should have told them, but I didn't. I didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings at the end of the day. And anybody, anybody that I meet that I know that's a little overweight, I said, look, you know, I want to help you out. You know I mean, I help you lose the weight and everything, you know. We can go to a dietitian. I'll help you out and support you and all that. Yeah, I got no problem with that. Now, what help him out? So, no, 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 we're not getting there. He's weird. He's already stalky enough already. But I just give him some advice. I just want to lose some weight. As a matter of fact, I'm helping this, this uh, friend of mine. So I'm going to help her out. Nice track down here. We got a nice track. We're doing our walks around the track, exercising. No, no smoking, no drinking, nothing. That vape is dangerous too. That stuff is really freaking dangerous. I got three of my friends that vape. I went to go look that stuff up. Are you freaking kidding me? You put that stuff in your system? You know how crazy that stuff is? Man, you guys got to get off of that, man. You got to get off of that vaping stuff, man. That stuff is dangerous, man. It is really dangerous. I mean, tell me, I'm you're talking to a person who used to suffer from lung disease. You really don't want to go down that road, man. I'm telling you. You don't want to go down that road. I know they tell you it's safe. And it's not safe. Trust me. Gotta get off that stuff. That stuff is dangerous, man. You're shortening your lifespan with that stuff. And they're young, too. A couple of these people I know they're young. That stuff 
And you people say, one lung's still great. I know what bad lungs feel like. I went through that before. You don't want that feeling ever in the world. You mean, you want to go through life feeling like you can breathe through a straw. You want to go through that. <laughs> All day long. That's what you want to go through. Constantly. <gasps> you can literally hear yourself breathe. My goodness. You don't want to go through that crap at the end of the day. You don't want that. Get off that vape nonsense. Get off of it. Get off that vape. That vape is dangerous. Get off of it. And I got people who smoke it constantly, constantly, all the time. Every time I see them, they got a vape um, in their hand, constantly smoking it. And don't be around people who smoke that stuff because it works like secondhand smoke, too, on top of that. That's why when they smoke that stuff, I'm like, back it up. Come on, take it all the way over there. Yeah, be careful. That stuff is dangerous. And you notice that people, when they smoke it, if you got a friend that smokes it, and a few of my friends that smoke it, they start off slow, and then you can't see it. Every five minutes, that thing is hitting their lips over and over and over again. You're killing yourself. Get off that stuff. It's a chemical. At the end of the day, you're pushing a chemical through your system. Now, it's messed up because, you know, they promoted it because they said, oh, it's better than smoking, which is jacked up because, you know, there should be a lawsuit for that because they promoted that stuff. It's better than smoking. It's better than you vape instead. And then people got on it trying to get it from smoking because smoking is even worse, but the vape is still worse. It's like out of the, uh, out of the frying pan into the fire scenario. Then they turn around and go, oh, this is bad for you too. Well, that's jacked up because then you got these people hooked on this stuff. And now you're telling them, oh, don't do it because, you know, at the end of the day, it's bad for you. There you go. So if you try to get off that stuff. tried to do I try to do push-ups as much as possible so I'll do and do my sets and tens and I'll do uh, five or six of those sets of ten I'll go back and work out on something else and I go back to the push-ups and go work out something to do back to push-ups just keep throwing my tens in there and then when I'm out there I go to my sister's house her uh, boyfriend works out all the time. So he's got weights over there. He's got chin-up bar. And while I'm waiting for them, because we're going somewhere, I work out over there too. And I get my push-ups in. And then when we go out, and then, you know, outside of those small park areas and stuff like that, I'll start doing my push-ups there. I do 10 there and 10 there. So pretty much you do push-ups through the whole entire day. When I was working at the carrying place, oh, it's easy to do push-ups and nothing was around. So I go upstairs, because then we was up there, and I get my workout in upstairs. And they had a nice little gym in there I found later on. And I started using the weight equipment in there. And then I just walked home. So I was about, about 16 blocks from the apartment. So I walked home. That's why I'm going to get one of those monitors to see how far I walk. Because I remember, man, at one point, I couldn't even, I couldn't even walk past my driveway without feeling the need to want to pass out. And now I can walk 16, 17, 20 blocks with no problem whatsoever. Man, God, it's good. And I don't even have disease. But I'm going to be seeing my doctor pretty soon. I have to go in there for a checkup. They're going to see a big transformation when I walk through there. Yep. Mr. Bird, you're still taking your inhalers? Are you still taking the prednisone? No, I don't take the prednisone anymore. I'm done with it. I don't, take it. I don't need it anymore. What about the inhalers? I don't use any inhalers anymore either. I'm good. Um, well, uh... We think you should continue to take the medication because, you know, it's, it's the... No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling fantastic. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I've been in here in a while. I've been working out, you know, back and forth. and just don't have any problems. So let's get you on the x-ray machine. And da, 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 da. Yeah. Doctors. Same doctors that told me when I got hit by a car and I got three screws in my kneecap that I'm never going to walk again. I'm going to be on the cane for the rest of my life. Did mountain, downhill mountain biking, did, did some hiking, got into martial arts and all the other stuff, weightlifting, all that stuff. Can't even tell which one is broken to tell you the truth. Yeah, right. Want to tell me I'm never going to walk again. <laughs> got the wrong person up in the day. I had this stuff called something, the end, the end of the macular disease. It's a disease for your eyes. I wasn't blind. This is before I got the screens, before I got the screen paints. I wasn't screen paints at the time. I wasn't blind a little bit. I had blurry vision on one eye. And on the other side, everything was in small, like 
Everything was tiny. I don't know what that was. It was these white spots they found on my eyes. They gave me these steroid drops. And the doctor said, well, most people had this disease. Um, they, they go blind. The Lord said, ain't going to happen. I got 20-20 vision. And I've got an incredible hearing. Because, you know, one sense it's failed, the other one picks up. So I got good hearing and my vision is fantastic. I don't wear glasses. I wear fake glasses. I'm not going to get into that right there. It's funny. So I wear fake glasses all the time. But anyway, yeah, then let's go through that. And then with the lung disease, took that from me too. No more lung disease. And I was supposed to have a rare, rare lung disease that very few people get. Very few people have it. Don't even know how to cure it. That's what they said. And then it was a problem. I was supposed to have a problem with my kidneys. My kidneys were after they were generating too many white cells or none of white cells. Some were supposed to be. And guess what? That was 15 years ago. And I had no problems with my kidneys. Nothing at all, period. So, when a doctor comes in and tells me that, hey, you are going to be going through this and the other, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you don't know my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you met Jesus Christ? Yeah, he's the one that takes care of me. Let me see. rare disease. I sat there in that doctor's room and I said, you mean to tell me out of all the different modes of um, mold poison I could have got out of that house, you mean to tell me I end up with one of the rare lung diseases that you guys don't know how to fix it or anything whatsoever? That's my disease right there. I was supposed to have. This is supposed to affect your lungs, your heart, everything. It's a rare disease and that's what I was diagnosed with. And think about that. When you think about that, when you're sitting in the hospital and they talk about all these different lung diseases that they have a cure for, and you happen to get the one that they don't know anything about, it's extremely rare. And you have it. Now imagine processing that through your head. But what processed through my head was, well, I've seen God heal my leg. I've seen God basically take all kinds of giving me my eyesight back. I seen the Lord heal me on so many different levels, it's not even funny. So guess what? I'm gonna leave it up to God. I don't believe in this. So I suffered through this for about four years. And then when it was time for me to leave that house, that's when everything changed. And that's when I started to lose my weight. And I started working out more, started eating better. And by the time I reached out in town, I lost my weight. I went back to working out. And right now this summer, everything's back to normal. And the disease doesn't even exist. And I noticed that less and less and less, I was using the inhalers. I mean, mine was so bad that even the cold weather would affect me. If it was too cold outside, that would bother me. So I had to remember to wear a heavy jacket to cover my chest because the cold air would make it hard for me to breathe. And then I couldn't be around people that had heavy perfumes or cigarettes and all that stuff. That would trigger me. And a lot of my friends are Jamaicans. So again, they like weed. And that would bother me. I don't smoke weed, but that stuff would bother me. And nope. No problems, nothing at all. God took it all away. I have nothing now. Nothing at all. As a matter of fact, I find it kind of interesting that when I was going through this process, that's when I got a taco. And I thought that people say, oh, if you got freaking lung breathing issues, you can't, um, can't be around cats, can't be around dogs because they'll mess up your breathing. And you know what? The Lord brought me taco into my life. 
and not once have I ever had a problem with them. Not once. So not only did the Lord I go through this rare lung disease, but he blessed me to have my cat and he sustained me through everything that I had to go through. And in the end, he took it from me. And I don't have it no more. So he gave me, I ended up with the worst and rarest lung disease. And he took something from me that the doctor said that would never go away. I'd never go back to my normal life. Stuck with it forever. And now, right top of the Lord said, Nope, ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Let me try some rock climbing. Same thing when I got in a car accident. Now I used to do roller hockey. I love roller hockey so much. One day, I'll set up a camera and I'll show you how good I am at roller hockey. Fred told me, yeah, you're never going to skate again. Got three screws in your kneecap. You're done. You're going to walk with a cane for the rest of your life. You forget about all that. That's what I was told. For anything about it, I ended up bumping into this woman outside and updating this woman. She's a physical therapist. Huh. Is that crazy? She's also a Christian. And she helped me get my leg and everything back to where it was. And when I got the insurance money, or Wall Street money, for the guy who struck me with the car, I went on and bought skates. What mission? Boy, mission hockey blades and the stick about the whole night about everything. Extra wheels, pucks, the whole nine yards, everything. I was skating with all my friends. And it's funny because I saw the doctor out there getting in his car and he was just looking at me. He was just shocked. Because I was not supposed to walk anymore. With a cane, yeah, but now I can't skate anymore. My leg was best busted up. And that's what they told me. All right, guess what? Now I walk 16, 17, 18, 20 blocks, no problem whatsoever. I can do it in snow, rain, sleet, it don't make a difference. I can do my presses, anything I want to do within the day. So it goes farther than just screen painting of being able to be blessed to develop anything we want. Anything and everything that I want to do, and if it's God's will, it's going to be done. Everything. Even when I pray before him, and I tell them about my enemies who prosecute me for no reason whatsoever. The Lord is going to make it, make it be done. I won't lose one lawsuit. I guarantee this. I'm going to win every single thing. And you know, walk in that court, I'm going to win everything. Because I don't have to lie. I don't have to make things up. My product works 100%. It's backed by my Lord and Savior. And the things these people have done to me. I don't have to lie about that. That's why we have all this evidence. We can back up everything. I will not shed one lie. When I'm at court, I'm going to tell the truth at 100%, and I will win. So if you're going to ask me from the door, where does my confidence level come from? It comes from serving the Lord. Because I watched them change me, myself, my body. When doctors have told me, profession in the fields, that this is where you can't do this and you can't do that. And God said, nope, don't do that. No problem whatsoever. You know, I suffer from, and you had that lung disease. I had the lung disease uh, 2019 is when I got it. So COVID just broke out. And it was, you're talking about going through Paranoid City? Just thinking that if anyone got me sick, I could die just like that. That fast, that quick. I wouldn't even have the chance to even fight it. That's how sick I was. And the Lord allowed me, I have never caught COVID. Never had it, ever. The Lord blessed me to be in a situation I never, ever caught it. I was able to work inside of my house, and the Lord blessed us with a ton of orders to be able to maintain everything that needed to be maintained for the places I was living at. And I never got sick. I was able to get food in, supplies in, everything I needed. The Lord blessed me to have that. He took care of me on that. 
And then through that process, while I was going through all that, I ended up with getting agoraphobic, which is when you're afraid to leave your home. And the Lord took that away too. Because the Lord sat there and said, it's time to go. You can't be here anymore. You have to leave this place. Because that place became my prison at one point. Because I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to go anywhere. I felt safer when I was there. I just didn't want to accept that COVID was just practically over. And it was practically over. I didn't realize how people were still were mingling. I thought everybody was still in lockdown. And they weren't. And when the day came and the Lord said, it's time to go. Packed up my stuff. Put everything in the truck. And we left. I had my mask on. I left that house. Most people have that disease of agoraphobic, can't leave the house. They can't leave the house. They will die in that house. But I knew it was time for me to go. And the Lord told me to go. I went because I believe in him. He never steered me wrong. So I left. I had my mask on. I got in the car. It's the first time me being around my brother-in-law and um, and my sister's friend, being around two different people that I hadn't been around at all, period, in a while, in four years. And I'm shaking their hands and all this stuff and hugging them. Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm not scared. Nothing's in my head. Nothing's crossing. No fear. It's not there anymore. God took it. So when I got in the truck and we went to a cheese place, I want some cheese steaks. I was like, oh my God, I haven't had cheese steak in so long. I haven't been out of the house in that long. And I walked in. When I walked in, I'm expecting to see people and the little lines and you know, everybody was mingling. Like everything went right back to normal. Like it never even happened. I'm like, wow. How long has this been going on? And they said, it's been going on for a bit. So I was literally trapped inside that house. The house became my prison. And the Lord saw this and said, I got to get him out of here. And that's what he did. So I went there. And as I was walking in, the Lord said, take your mask off. And I took my mask off. Walked in there. Got my food. People were all around me. That stuff would have freaked me out. If the Lord basically wasn't there for me, it would have freaked me out. I'd have never left that truck. As a matter of fact, I'd have never left the house to begin with. But I went in there, sat down, had some food, talked to some people. I was in there so long that when it came to put my card down to pay for it, that basically, I didn't know you could just tap them now. Because I'm used to sliding everything through. So you can tap these now. That's how long I was in that house. So my first time when I was on camera, I said, wow, I just went to a Rite Aid today. I walked to a Rite Aid and went in and got a bag of chips. I sat in line with other people. I shook someone's hand at the end of the day. You know how crazy that wasn't that disease I actually put that in your head in the day? So the Lord allowed me to break free of all that. Because he has plans for me. So now the new technology we're best with, I gotta be on site, I gotta be here, I gotta be there. I would have never been able to do those installments and never be able to walk into those places and talk to those people if I was trapped in that house like that. So that's why we have an company unstoppable, because what my Lord has planned for me is unstoppable. You go through stuff like that in life, there's nothing that can stop you. Nothing. I've been through my trials and tribulations, and I believe in my God 100%. No one can take that from me. No one can challenge me on it. I'll land on my feet every single time. As long as I serve Him, do His will, keep off the wide and crooked path, stay away from Satan. I will always be victorious, always. Everything that I do every day is a blessing. And at one point, I couldn't do it. Where's my water bucket at? Thing so much. So, uh, good way for a nice workout. Five gallon bucket filled with water. I got some with rocks at the bottom and some without. You bring it up to your chest, hold it, bring it back down. Bring it up to your chest, hold it, bring it back down. Fantastic workout. Excellent workout.
Yeah. Surrey. The naysayers at the end of the day, really, you believe you can hurt me with insults? You can't hurt me at all, period. With the YouTube you don't know the road I had to travel to get here. Yeah, you don't even know the road I had to travel before I started my screen paint process. You have no idea. All I see you as when you act like that is see the devil. That's all I see. You can't break me in any way whatsoever. I'm much stronger than you. There's so many levels, it's not funny. I think about that from time to time when I'm sitting in that courtroom. Man, I'm 55. If I got to 40 years, if I got to 40 years, I probably would have got on good behavior. I don't know. But that's a huge chunk of my life gone right there. If I got to 80 years, then that means I'd still be in. Probably did already.